morning. Morning, Ian. how are you? You were here a second ago, weren't you? I just uh, had a problem with my phone, so I had to go off and then on again. Good morning. Keep putting your comments in. Keep saying hello to me. That'd be awesome. Good morning, good morning. How are you? What are you up to this morning? Anybody here studying for a theory test? Good, I am pleased to hear that. Good morning, man. Good morning, Nads. Rabs, Ellen, Louise, hi again. Gilio, Lantica, Hannah, Amy, Ibixa. Those of you on already. Hi, good morning, good morning. Let me know who's studying for a theory test. You've got yours, Becca, May Brown, 8th of March. So still a couple of weeks. When's the 8th of March? Almost two weeks then to prepare for it. Awesome, so you've got plenty of time. Are you prepared what you're using to prepare? Sophie, you're studying, are you? Cool. Well, you bought the course the two half weeks time. Okie dokie, 5th of April, awesome. 31st of March, you've got yours tomorrow. Everything aviation, you've got yours tomorrow. Well, I hope I can help in some way today this morning so stay with me i i'll be i'll be here for a couple of hours at least about two and a half hours i'll be here thanks for the likes uh keep them coming that'll be awesome um more and more people um who will like this then the more it gets thrown out to people how do you purchase my course big strategy by clicking on that link that i've just pinned there for you so there's a link i've just pinned at the bottom of your screen uh, you've been listening to the hypnosis, have you? Have you? It's it's, it's even hard recording the hypnosis because I put myself to sleep when I'm doing it. Funnily enough, um, so yeah, awesome. Uh, you have your theory a week today. So scared. So scared again. Does that mean you've taken it before? You don't need to be scared. Just do what you can do on the day. Just think. I'll just do what I can do. Trust yourself. And you know, <laughs> you know that a lot of the answers, a lot of the questions are, um, are, are obvious, aren't they? That a lot of them are common sense. And you know that. It's just those last few questions that you need. And then if you've done your work, then just trust yourself. Just trust that you know the answer. Um, if you've done the work, then you will do. You've got your test in tomorrow at 11. Uh, you're so stressed. Like I say, just do what you can do. You know, I mean, it's not good to fail it. You don't want to fail it. But if you fail it, you have to take it again. That's it. That's it, isn't it? Um, when, tra when you're training to be a driving instructor and you're doing your driving test, you only have three attempts. You have as many attempts at this theory as you want to have. And if you want to make sure that you pass it, then if you go all the way through my course, then you will pass it. Just go. You just pass. That's awesome. Try the hypnosis course. It's really good. You won't be stressed. Yeah, that's what. Thank you, Ian. That's what it's all about. So doing the work first and then doing something to keep to calm your nerves and stop you from getting stressed. Keep the likes coming. Let's um, let me let me know. Is this your first time watching me? Congratulations, Ems. That's awesome. Congratulations. You got yours today. D. Louise. Good luck for today. Ems. You, yeah, you passed yesterday. Congratulations. That's awesome. So it's your first time watching me. Ian, I know you've seen me before. Hi, Farzan. Is it your first time watching me? Let me know. Or have you seen me before? Let me know and I'll start. I'll introduce myself. We'll go through a question before we go through into, um, into the first lesson of the day. You suffer with anxiety. I mean, there, there is, you can help yourself with anxiety. You can, there are ways to help yourself. Um, so, you know, Got your course, D. Louise. Awesome. Uh, there are ways to help yourself. Whether you go through the techniques that are in my course, whether you see somebody who will, a one-to-one -one who will help you get rid of your anxiety. Um, but there are ways of doing it. Even just deep breathing exercises. It depends on how anxious you feel and how easy it is to get rid of yours. But there are ways. And tell yourself, first of all, that you are in control of how you feel. You felt embarrassed. and You don't need to feel embarrassed. I'm sorry you feel like that. Um, but you're not on your own. You're not on your own. Just think, decide, just think, what did I fail on? And go and practice that particular thing. Um, and, and, and if you are anxious, then think about getting doing something to get rid of your anxiety. 
okay let me tell you who i am because some people are here for the first time and lots of people have seen me before but my name is annie i'm a driving instructor i'm a driving instructor trainer i do i do deliver driving lessons i'm also a theory test expert i created this course i do these lives to help you pass your theory to make theory easy for you i've created this course to make to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to pass your theory test um, it, the course is 34.99 while i'm live it's normal Normally worth 69.95 everything I'm offering you'll be a hundred percent prepared to pass when you go through this course it's got everything in it that you could need in order to pass I want to go over a question with you now a question that a lot of people get mixed up with maybe you do maybe you don't but I want to show you how easy it is before we move on to a lesson so who can tell me what does this sign mean put your answers in the comments please what what does this sign mean yeah some good answers coming in you're new here hello how are you i'm a driving instructor i'm doing a driving a theory lesson making theory easy for you and this is a sign that lots and lots of people answer wrong in their test and i want you to answer it correctly i want you to see how easy it is to answer this question and, and i want to show you why you're getting mixed up i think most people are getting mixed up actually but that's fine i'm going to show you now Jacob Owen, Valerie Smith, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this sign, what people are getting mixed up with is the difference between, which one did I show you? The difference between this sign and this sign. Now, they are both triangular signs, so they're both warning signs. All triangular signs are warning signs. You can easily remember that. If you make a triangle with your hands, open your hands out, you've got the shape of a W for warning. So this, these are both warning signs. This one is warning you of two-way traffic crossing over in front of you. This is warning you of two-way traffic straight ahead of you. And people are always getting mixed up. Now it does, they both do mean two-way traffic, but look at the difference. Two-way traffic straight in front of you, up and down, straight ahead. Two-way traffic crosses your route, crossing over. Does that now make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Let me know. So what does this sign mean? Look at the difference. Like I say, if you're getting mixed up, so many people do. That's why I'm including it here. It, it isn't difficult now, makeup art. It's not difficult now, is it? Two-way traffic straight in front of you, up and down, ahead of you, up and down the road. Two-way traffic going straight across your path. Two-way traffic crosses over your route ahead of you. Two-way traffic up and down the road. See, see the difference? I know, as soon as you see them together, it's super easy, isn't it? So answer this question for me then. What does this sign mean? You know it means two-way traffic. It's common sense to you, 125 Daily, and other things are common sense to, to other people that aren't to you. So let's be kind. Um, I'm telling you, lots and lots of people get mixed up with this. So th what does this sign mean? Two-way traffic. So don't just say two-way traffic. That's when you get mixed up. It does mean two-way traffic, but is it straight in front of you or is it crossing over your route? So pop your answer in. Two-way traffic crossing. Freya, awesome. Anybody else going to put the answer in here? What does this sign mean? Let's not get it yet. Yeah, crossing over, crossing over. If you type it in, if you say it out loud, it becomes more and more obvious. Now, some things are incredibly obvious when we've been told them. How many times do we do that? Oh, yeah, of course. I do that a lot. So, yeah, absolutely. It's a warning sign and it's warning you. This one is two-way traffic up and down the road. The arrows are going up and down. 
<laughs> Freddie, thank you. This one's traffic, two-way traffic crossing over your route. The arrows go side to side. See the difference. Jazza, awesome. So has that helped? What I want to know, if you double tap the screen, um, when I've gone through a, a little question or a lesson, and if you double tap the screen, then I know that I've helped a few people and that'd be awesome. I've got some yeses and some double taps coming up. So what does that question? Are triangles, all triangle signs are warning signs. They are Seleka. And you can easily remember that if you make a triangle shape with your hands, so you've got a triangle shape here. Open your hands out. You've got a shape of a W for warning. Triangle signs are warning signs. Awesome. So this sign means two-way traffic, not just two-way traffic. Make sure you say, make sure you finish that sentence off because one of them means two-way traffic straight ahead of you. One of them means two-way traffic crossing over in front of you. So make sure you finish the sentence. Should we do another question? Let's do another question. All of this, remember, I'll pin my course for you for those who want to look at it. All of this is in the course. I will explain everything easily for you and you'll have the most updated questions and, and, and lessons in there to help you learn. Okay, another question. I covered this yesterday, so if you were with me yesterday, you're going to have to hear it again, I'm afraid. But if not, if not, um, this is what so many people get mixed up with, signalling at roundabouts. And what I want to do is just explain to you how super easy signalling at roundabouts is to learn. OK, so if you know the answer, pop the answer in. If you don't know the answer, put IDK and don't worry about it because I'm going to help you. What signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Signal left before leaving the roundabout. Don't signal at any time. Signal right when you're approaching the roundabout. Signal left when you're approaching the roundabout. Let me make sure I've got my pictures ready. I have I've got my pictures ready here to show you, to share with you. Okay, I'm waiting for a few more answers to come in. I want to know what you know. Okay, so let's get rid of the, uh, it's common sense to you. It's not, it's not, uh, you sit at, sit at a roundabout, one, two, five daily, and see so many people getting this wrong. And if people who've been driving for many years get it wrong, um, then the learners find it tricky as well. Okay, so it's it's not just common sense it is something that people need to be learned to learn okay well it is to you that's awesome that's awesome well done it must be um must be, it feels good doesn't it when you know when you know stuff there you go cool okay so let's go over it with you let's go uh, let's go over it so this is let's get this image of the roundabout now you need, I'll go through the answer now. When you're do, looking at roundabouts, there's two different signals you need to know. You need to know signalling to approach the roundabout, signalling when you're driving towards the roundabout, and you need to know about signalling to come off the roundabout, okay? Signalling to approach the roundabout when you're driving towards it, and signalling to come off the roundabout. So that's two different signals that you need to know about it. So let's first of all, we'll split them up. First of all, we'll talk about signalling to approach the roundabout. I know, I know, ignore them. Let's talk about signalling to drive towards the roundabout. So I've got this picture to show you. Look at this red car. This red car here is driving towards the roundabout. If this red car is going to go left, it would signal left now. If this red car was going to go right, third exit, it would signal right now. If this round, this red car was going ahead, second exit, it wouldn't signal now. That's really important to remember. If you're going ahead, you're not going to signal. Just the same as if you were at a crossroads. 
There's no roundabout here. This is just a crossroad junction. If you're going left, you signal left. If you're going right, you signal right. If you're going ahead, you don't signal. Just remember, there is no signal to say I'm going ahead. There isn't an I'm going ahead signal. You just go ahead. OK, does that make sense? I'm talking about approaching a roundabout when you're driving towards a roundabout. There are two signals you need to know, one for when you're driving towards a roundabout and one for when you're coming off a roundabout. When you're driving towards a roundabout, you signal left if you're going left, you signal right if you're going right and you do not signal if you're going ahead because the same as in a crossroads, there is no signal that says, I'm going ahead, okay? That's, I mean, isn't that super easy when somebody explains it to you, yeah? So that's why some people are saying it's common sense. It's not common sense. We need it explaining to us, um, and especially when lots of people get it wrong. Um, but signal left if you're going left, right if you're going right. Don't signal if you're going straight ahead. Now, the second signal, but uh, double tap the screen or put yeses in the comments if you get that, first of all. Do you get that, first of all? Thank you, Annalise. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, you get that. Brilliant. Now you can answer any question. Don't let other answers confuse you if you're going straight ahead and you're driving towards the roundabout. Do not signal. Because when you're driving towards the roundabout, you're trying to tell people where you're going. When you're driving towards the roundabout, you're telling them, I'm going left, I'm going right, or I'm going ahead. If you signal left, you're telling them you're going left. If you signal right, you're telling them you're going right. <laughs> if you don't signal, you're telling them, I'm going straight ahead. Same as on a normal road. Now, when you're going, when you're coming off a roundabout, you always signal. Let's just put a yes if you understand that. When you're coming off a roundabout, you will always signal. Which way would you signal to come off a roundabout? Just picture yourself driving around a roundabout and think, which way am I always coming off? Am I always coming off that way or am I always coming off that way? Which way? Yeah, you know it, Maz, you know it. We're always going left off a roundabout. Yeah, aren't we? We're going around right and then we're coming off to the left. So you always signal left to come off a roundabout. Now, when do we signal to come off a roundabout? Look at this picture here. If you're going first exit, you will be signaling left here. If you're going straight ahead, you'd signal left when you get to here, just as you pass the exit before yours. If you're going right, You'd be signalling right, but you signal left when you got to here, just as you pass the exit before yours. If you signal too early, you're telling people you're going down the wrong, um, the wrong junction. So imagine that roundabout with one, two, three exits and the fourth exit would be back down here. Imagine that. Imagine it was now in a straight road and we've got one, two, three exits. We would signal left to go the first exit here. We'd signal left to go down the second exit when we got to here. We'd signal left to go down the third exit when we got to here. So as you're passing by the exit before yours, that's when you start to signal. Now can you see how super easy it is? We always signal to come off. We don't signal if we're going straight ahead. Now let me know, I've, I've missed some comments and some roses, thank you. I'm sorry, because I'm trying to explain it. I'm really sorry I've missed them. Um, can you talk about a three-way roundabout? It's exactly the same. Any exit that's ahead of you is going to be here, straight up ahead of you. Imagine this is a clock. This is six o'clock, this is 12 o'clock, straight ahead of you. If this exit was here, it would be right. Or here, it would be right. Anything that's past here is a right turn. Does that make sense? It's first lesson on Monday, LA Fitness. Don't be now. Try and just enjoy it. We love giving first lessons. You should enjoy your first lesson. Have I helped you guys? Let me know. Does that help in any way? 
cool. Now, if you don't 100% get it straight away, don't worry about it. I've I've introduced it for you or maybe some of you will get it all or uh, completely by now that's fine it depends on where you are with your learning okay so let's come back to the question the question is what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout and what I want to do is get rid of two rubbish answers thank you Anna Maria get rid of two rubbish answers what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? What is rubbish? What's rubbish? Well, I'm going to get rid of, yes, you, yeah, absolutely. Some of you are answering that brilliantly. I'm saying don't signal at any time is rubbish. You do signal at roundabouts. So you can get rid of that straight away. I've got rid of signal left when you're approaching the roundabout. If you signal left when you're approaching the roundabout, you're telling everybody that you're going down here. It's very dangerous to tell people you're going down here if you're not, because people that are coming out of here could crash into you. If you don't go down here, but instead you carry on driving, people coming out of here could crash into you. So you would not signal left unless you were going left. So we've got rid of two rubbish answers. We're left with two, only two options. See, getting rid of two rubbish answers is a really good technique for answering theory test questions. So now, what is the right answer? Think about what I've said. Maybe not all of you have heard of this, but your, what signal should you give when you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? I'll just hold my picture up so that you can have a look at this. You're going straight ahead. Should you signal left before leaving the roundabout? Or should you signal right when you're approaching the roundabout? Is it A or is it C? You're going straight ahead. If you were going straight ahead, what signal would you give? There's lots of you getting it right here. Good. Owen K, absolutely. Zane, absolutely. Shadow, fantastic answers. Noise, noise absolutely. Good. So the right, the, the right answer there is you would signal left before leaving the roundabout. Let me just explain it again. That this red car is going to go straight ahead. B said signal right when you're approaching the roundabout. If you signal right when you're here, you're telling people you're going right. Why would you tell people you're going right if you were going straight ahead? Think about it. Look at this picture here. Just imagine you're at a crossroad instead of a roundabout. Why would you signal right if you were going straight ahead? You wouldn't. Now, there is no signal for going straight ahead. So as you're approaching, you wouldn't signal at all, but you would signal left before leaving the roundabout. You always signal left before leaving the roundabout. So that's always going to be the answer, isn't it? At a main roundabout, you would always signal left before leaving. Next question. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Look how many people are on this live. This live is not for you personally. Look how many people are on it. So I'm trying to suit everybody. You wouldn't signal if you were going straight odd bod. Fantastic. You wouldn't signal on the approach. So how should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? This is another one that people are getting wrong. Would you signal right on the approach and then left to leave? You didn't, it's a different question. Would you signal left after you leave and enter the new road? Would you signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on? Would you signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you want to take? How can this be the same question? It's a different question, same topic. So what's the correct answer there? If you go straight ahead at a roundabout, what is the correct answer to that? So let's break them down. Lots of different answers coming in. Most of the most of you are now coming up with the correct answer, which is awesome. Let's go through them one by one. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Signal right on the approach. No, you're going straight ahead. Let's get rid of that one straight away. You're going straight ahead. Why would you signal right on the approach? Get rid of A. Signal left 
after you leave the roundabout. No, you wouldn't signal after you've left the roundabout. That would be far too late. Why would you signal after you've left? Signal right on the approach. See, no, you wouldn't signal right on the approach to the roundabout. Hi, Siobhan. So the only one that's left is signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you want to take. You go straight ahead, you signal left when you get to here, just after you pass the exit before the one you want to take. Lots of words in this question. That's why some people get it mixed up. If you can get rid of the rubbish answers, and if you're going straight ahead at the, round, the roundabout, then A and C are absolute rubbish, aren't they? Because you don't signal right on the approach. Does that help? Thank you, Hello. Does that help? I'll get on with the first lesson in a minute. Just a couple of questions I want to go through. I'm going to go through those lots because so many people are getting mixed up. It helps, says Alexandra. Awesome. I'm sorry you don't understand it. If you don't understand it, you can sign up for this course. You can click on this link to go to my YouTube channel and you'll be able to see it all in more detail. I've got a roundabout video in my YouTube channel. Yay. My name is Annie. Let me introduce myself. You tell me, is this your first time watching me or have you seen me before? Let me know and I will introduce myself. Is it your first time watching me or have you seen me before? So my name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm a, an approved driving instructor. Good luck for 10 o'clock. Enjoy it. Uh, I, I'm an approved driving instructor. I work and I run a driving school in Nutsford and Northwich, which is in Cheshire. I'm also an audit trainer. Hi, for thanks for joining me for the first time. I'm also an audit trainer. I train people to become driving instructors as well. And I'm a theory test expert because I realise how many people struggle with their theory test. Um, for my, I've, I created this course so I could give people a step-by-step -step guide to passing their theory test. I've put all sorts of stuff in it like video tutorials and fact lists and worksheets all to help you learn. So I created this course and I was awarded Superior uh, Most Innovative Driving School. I've also been awarded Superior Achievement and Excellence. The, my course has been looked at by the DVSA and they are happy with the course. And this is what somebody had to say about it. They said, uh, gave me a five star review and said, I just wanted to share as I passed my theory with such a high mark. Thank you, Makeup Art. Um, and 69 out of 75 on the Hazard Perception. This is a huge thank you to you as your online course and TikToks help me thoroughly. So this course is an online course um, and you can use it whenever you want. You can do it in your own time. It takes most people about two to six weeks. If you now understand signaling at roundabouts because of what I've just said to you, if you now understand the difference between this sign and this sign because of what I've just said to you, then you may, you know that this course will help you because that's what I do throughout for all of your theory. Yeah, double tap the screen, give me some likes, that'd be really great. Next, our first lesson today is motorway signs. So first of all, answer this question. What colour are motorway signs? What colour are motorway signs? It's all in this link. Have a look at this link. Yeah, absolutely. Motorway signs are blue, blue, blue and white. Yeah, absolutely. Motorway signs are blue and white. That's going to help you answer some theory test questions if you can always remember. You're either going to get information signs that are blue or motorway signs that are blue. Blue rectangles, rectangular shaped signs are information signs and blue ones are motorway signs. How long does it take to do my course? As long as you want. Most people take between two and six weeks. Okay, so cool. Let me just. Cool. So what should you do when you see this sign as you travel along a motorway? Let me know. What should you do 
when you see this sign as you travel along the motorway. So put the answer in the comments. Put a thank you, Dawn Plum. My course is amazing. Thank you. Uh, sh what should you do? Let me know if you know the answer. If you don't know, put IDK. If everybody on here knows the answer, then I would skip to a different topic, wouldn't I? So I need to know if you don't know. That's important to me. So what should you do? If you do know, put the answer in. It makes you feel great, doesn't it? If you don't know, put an IDK in. Cool. Okay, so I can see um, I can see lots of people know. I can see lots of I don't knows. I can also see which sign people are getting mixed up with. So that's then that's good for me. So that's um, what I'm going to help explain it to you. And in a minute, you're going to find it super easy and super obvious. Sometimes, like with these two signs, it's looking at them together. And then you can see the difference when you look at the signs together. So I'm going to show you two signs together and show you what people are getting mixed up with. They're getting mixed up with these two signs, okay? These two signs that look very, very similar, but they mean two different things. So let me show you again. Look at the first sign here, this one here. You can see that on this picture here you can see the arrow pointing over towards the right and you can see the the uh, three lanes with a 50 over them and it's telling you to move over okay it's telling you to move over to the right lane to change lane as soon as it's safe you can see that again you can see lane one has a 50 over it lane two has a 50 over it and lane three has that arrow that's pointing down and towards the left move lane so maybe if you do that with your hands and say move lane that move left that will help you with other signs as well actually okay move over to the left that will help you with other road signs as well it's because that lane is going to be closed for some reason okay for some reason, that lane is going to be closed. Yeah, so move lanes. Cool. Now, this sign is different. This sign is telling you to leave the motorway at the next exit. If you look at the arrow, if you look at the arrow, it goes up and then across, up and then over to the left up and then over to the left okay so when you have to leave the motorway at the next exit you have to first of all drive forward to the next exit and then go over to the left does that make sense so this one is telling you to change lane as soon as you can this one is telling you to drive forward until you get to the next exit then come off to the left does that now make sense see how super easy it is when you see them together Change lane could be over to that way or over to that way. Leave the motorway is always going to be over towards the left. Clifford, what's the problem? Uh, uh, Clifford, go to, hang on a second. Screenshot now, Clifford, and go, and, and go to those people and they'll help you straight away. They'll help you today. Cool. I know it. Yeah, I'm glad you find it helpful. Screenshot now, Clifford. I'm glad you find it helpful. Let's come back to the question, shall we? What should you do when you see this sign as you travel along a motorway? Leave at the next exit. Turn left immediately. Change lane or move on to the hard shoulder. Now, the ones that people are getting mixed up with are A and C. So let's get rid of turn left immediately and move on to the hard shoulder. People know it's not those answers. So let's let's leave it at A and C. Which of those is it? Is it leave at the next exit or change lane? Leave one of them was up and forward, one uh, forward and across, and one of them was uh, over to the side, wasn't it either side? So is it A or C? Pop your answers in now, put loads of answers in. And if I've helped you, please double tap the screen. That would really, really help me to know that I've helped you. If you've learned something, double tap the screen. Some of you already knew it. That's awesome if you already know it. But I know that this is a question that thousands of people get mixed up with. And I've worked out why and how I can explain it to you to make you, help you to understand. Thank you, Molly. 
Fab, you passed your theory. Who was that? Corey Boy, awesome, congratulations. Okay, so you're absolutely right. Leave at the next exit. If you only just joined in, change lane. Change lane is this one. It's going to be an, an arrow going down and over to one way or down and over to the other way. And leave the motorway is an arrow that goes forward and then over to the left. You keep driving forward to get to your exit and then you come off to the left. That makes sense, cool. Change lane is diagonal, the other is leave the motorway. Yeah, that's what, that's that's awesome. Um, who's that? Dallas official. So you need to find a way. I will try and give you ways that help me to learn, but you find ways that help you to learn. And da I can't remember the name again, sorry. Who, what, who was that? Dallas? Dallas official said so change lane is diagonal. That's the way that that person is going to remember that change lane is diagonal. Find your words, your way of learning, your way of remembering. And then a really great way of keeping the information in your head is saying it out loud, typing it in or going teaching it to somebody else. Like, do you know, Dad, that the change lane goes diagonal and the leave the motorway is forward then over to the left? <laughs> Even if they don't understand you, that'll help you to keep it in your head. OK, so next question. Why would they tell you to leave the motorway? Why would they tell you to leave the motorway? Who can answer that question? You can probably got better ideas than me. Why would they tell you to leave the motorway? Let's come back to this. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Oh, Tony, awesome. That's what my husband did, but after more than 20 years. Why would they tell you to leave? Bob Aru asks, why would they tell you to leave the motorway? Could anybody come up with an answer? The motorway is closed. Accidents, incidents, absolutely. If the motorway is closed because of the big accident, if there's roadworks, absolutely. There's some kind of hazard. Yeah, yeah, it does It does happen. Um, there's, there was a, a big crash the other day at a motorway near us and everybody were told way back to come off the motorway and go a different route. Closed or roadworks, brilliant. I hope that helps you because two or more cars kissed each other. <laughs> Let's put it nicely. Okay, it's often in London, is it? Okay. Too many people driving too fast and too close to each other. You're driving on a motorway. What should you do if there's a red cross with flashing lights on the gantry above your lane? Urgency repair, yeah. What should you do if there's a red cross with flashing red lights on the gantry above your lane? So don't forget, Jack Evans, stay with me. I see how much I can help you this morning. What should you do if it's a red cross? Well, first of all, I want you to properly understand questions. I don't want you to just be memorising answers. It's great if you can. But sometimes the questions, well, no, often the questions in your theory test will be asked in a different way. And I want you to understand the wording of the questions. So who knows what is a gantry? Good luck for two days, Tyler. What is a gantry? You don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Food guy, mood something. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Nicola. Yeah, fantastic. So I want you to know what a gantry is. Okay, so it simply is this metal framework that's going over the motorway. A bit, dawn plum, yeah. A big metal framework that goes over the motorway and you can hang um, big direction signs and orders to follow onto this gantry. So it's a framework of motorway signs. Why are the motorway signs so big and why are they so high up why are the motorway signs so big and why they're so high up so you can see them so they can be seen from a distance you are traveling very quickly you want to know what's happening way ahead of you um easily so you can see them from a distance and they want to be high enough up for lorries not to hit them as well 
Awesome. So the question is, you're driving on a motorway. What should you do if there's a red cross with flashing red lights on the gantry above your lane? Now let's get rid of a couple of rubbish answers. Let's get rid of turn left immediately. There's nothing about turning left on that red cross. And let's get rid of slowing down to 50 miles per hour. It wouldn't mean that because there's no 50 above the lane. So we'll get rid of those two. We've only got two options left. All of a sudden, the theory test looks so much easier, doesn't it? The answers look so much easier. So what is the right answer there? Should you leave at the next exit or don't go beyond the signal in that lane? Thank you, Ice. Is it A or is it D. So I've got mostly saying the correct answer, just to the couple of people that are still getting mixed up and the ones that are not answering. Remember that um, leave at the next exit was this one. Go forward and then over to the left. The arrow goes forward, then over to the left, telling you to drive on until you get to the exit and then come off to the left. So the red cross, it means don't go beyond the signal in that lane. If there's red crosses over all the lanes, over, over every single lane, you don't go beyond that signal um, at all. You don't go beyond the, beyond, don't carry on down the motorway at all. You'd put your hazard warning lights on and you slow down. Could you please teach us about arm signals? Can you ask me again in the Q&A session? And if other people want to teach them, then yes, I will. So many people are getting them wrong and they are super easy when somebody goes through them with you. Um, but ask me again when it's Q&A. Ask Annie. When I've got the Ask Annie sign, ask me that again. Okay, so what are these? It says, it says on the sign... Um, on the slide that these are countdown markers but what are they there for scenario thank you what are these for what's the point of them josh yeah courtney yeah in in georgia yeah awesome answers here yeah now remember when we're looking at this some people have never been on a motorway some people are not even from this country um some people travel on motorways every day um almost like i did when i was a child and i moved to dorset and my children didn't go on motorways okay so what you know depends depends on where you live what's that because you've been choosing okay so what you need to know as you're driving down a motorway you need to know when the next exit is especially if you want to come off the motorway how far away will you first be notified of the next exit? Does anybody know how far away from the exit will you get your first notification? If you don't know, it doesn't matter, just put DK uh, or IDK for I don't know. Yes, Y90, one mile away. So when you're one mile from a junction, you will be, be notified, there'll be a sign telling you you're one mile away from the next exit. Then you get another one. Before these, you get another notification. Does anybody know how far that is away? Your first one is one mile away. Your second one is, does anybody know? Gerard Swammers, yeah, half a mile away, random development, yes, half a mile away, okay? So first one, one mile away, second one, half a mile away. And then you'll get the this one here. This one is how many um, yards away from the exit. There's three three bars on this sign. How many how many yards away? Three hundred yards away. You get this one, and then you'll get this one at two hundred yards away. Keep putting your answers in, and then you put this one one hundred yards away from your exit. Now three hundred, two hundred, and one hundred yards away from your exit is pretty close to your exit. So well before that, you should be planning to get back into the left-hand lane well before, okay? And then when you get to this third countdown marker, you know you're 300 yards away. When do you need to start signalling to exit a motorway? Would it be, thank you, Cider Form, would it be 
300, 200 or 100 yards away from the exit? Someone's got the right answer already. Courtney Barrett, well done. Yeah, when you're, th when, when you're 300 yards away, check your mirrors. I would always check my right hand mirror uh, in case, I know you're coming over to the left, but just in case somebody's going past you and thinking, oh my gosh, there's my exit and they want to cut in in front of you. So always see what's, check what's happening to your right. But at 300 yards, check your mirrors and start signalling. A lot of people say it should be 200 yards. There's only about three seconds of driving between 300 yards and 200 yards away. So if you check your mirrors and then pop your signal on, um, then you're almost at the 200 yards mark anyway. Mary Snow, congratulations for passing yesterday. Um, so that, that, that is um, some really good tips. And that is my motorway signs lesson. Before we leave, what does this sign mean? Remember, motorway signs are in blue and white, but this one's got a red slash going through it. What does this sign actually mean? Yay, Emmy, Emma, Emmy, Emma, Emmy. Official daft truck. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you need to know that motorway ending, end of motorway, fantastic. Now, I, I've included th these two road signs already this morning and I have talked about signalling to when you're approaching and signalling to come off roundabouts and I have just also given you my motorway signs lesson these are all I've given you all these for free they're all part of my course awesome answers yes this sign means end of motorway but keep putting your answers and I'm loving seeing them <coughs> excuse me and I've included those lessons this morning because the pass rate is really low. The official government figures are 1.9 million tests taken in a year, only just under 879,000 passes. That means there's a 47% pass rate. That means that just under 53% of people are failing the theory test. And if you, do you agree that that figure is way too high? 53% of people failing is way too high. My son can't pass it, he's done it 10 times to help. Laura, I can help. I've helped people who have failed it 5, 10, 15, 20 times, or people who have not even taken it and want to pass it for the first attempt. You can click on the link that I've just pinned there for you. And what you will see, what is it? It's going to come up on my on my um, iPad here. What you will see is three buttons to click on. One to, pa to buy the course, one to buy it as a gift voucher, um, and one to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. So please uh, click on this link and have a look at that. It's not pop coming up on mine. People are failing. I don't know why your son is failing, but people do and they're failing again and again and again. I know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. That's why I do this job. It's why I'm standing here right now in my office. Um, at, there you go. Every more, every morning, every afternoon, every evening. The link is here. There you go. And when you click on the link, that's what you'll see. You'll see three buttons. One theory test course, theory gift voucher, and YouTube subscribe, okay? So you can buy it for your son or you can save the link for your son, but this link gives you the free content as well, the bonuses. Now, people are failing for all kinds of reasons. You put a me, please put a me in the comments if you think people are failing or you have failed because they're anxious. People are failing because they have no motivation to study. People are failing because they... Um, they don't understand the wording of the questions. They're failing because it's studying is just boring. Questions and answers, questions and answers, and trying to memorise the answers is boring. People are failing because, Daniel, they have ADHD. People are failing because they don't speak English as a first language. Thank you, Lauren. People are failing because they have no motivation. Absolutely. People are failing because um, they have learning difficulties. People are failing because they have... Um, um, what else? What else? What else? What else is that? They have learning difficulties. They can drive super well. Do you know one of the best drivers I had right from day one and the most aware drivers 
um, aware of other road users and what people could do, couldn't pass her theory test because she had learning difficulties, but she was an absolutely amazing driver right from day one. I would say to her, I'd say to her in the first lesson, that's happened, so what could happen? She gave me a whole list of things that really um, people who could do, you know, A-level physics couldn't tell me. Um, dyslexia, have dyslexia and pass, that's awesome. So people, people with dyslexia do struggle. Um, and then it's embarrassing. I had a message yesterday saying, I'm so embarrassed. I've failed it uh, about six times now. And it's so embarrassing having to tell my uh, friends and family I failed it yet again. And frustrating. Does anybody here find it frustrating? Stay with me. I've got another lesson to come. What have I got coming for you? What have I got coming? Um, Oh, box junctions. If you struggle with box junctions, stay with me um, because I'm going to help with that with a question. And then I'm going to go over my two-step technique to help you if you if you second guess yourself. A technique to answer any question is awesome. So stay with me, but I'll just go through my course. Um, it's a waste of time, isn't it? It's such a waste of time. I know somebody who's had to spend all day getting to her theory test by the time she'd travelled to the theory test centre and travelled home again. To get home with a failed result is such a waste of time. Can I take my theory at 16? No, it's 17. Um, unless you're on the higher level of disability, it's 17. It is embarrassing and frustrating and I'm really, it makes me really sad to hear that um, because it's not deliberate, is it? You're not thinking, I'm going to go and fail it deliberately here, but you're not on your own. I want you to know you're not on your own, but all I also want you to know there is help there for you. There's not much help around. And I've been planning this course for many, many years. And lockdown gave me the opportunity to put it, what I was teaching, into a course because I had nothing else to do. And I'm really, really happy I've had that time. Because um, it's such a waste of money. £23 each time. And the, the, the lady who was saying before about, about her son, that means he spent £230 on failing. This course is £34.99. £230 on failing. Is there a time limit on the exam? Yes, there is. 57 minutes to answer 50 questions. And then, um, is your son ready for his driving test? You failed last week, came out and cried, was so embarrassed. Lexi Baker, I'm really, really sorry to hear that. Um, but 53% of people fail, you're not on your own. If you can keep that in your head, but also keep in your head, there are options. These lives are options for you. And I will do them. I will do lives every weekday, as long as my voice is holding up. And I might try and find somebody else to do my lives when I can't do them, because I can't do them all day, obviously. I'll ask later if that would be useful for you. What I want to do is teach you to pass these lives my TikTok account, my YouTube account, my Instagram account are there to teach you. My theory is tonight your course. The course is amazing. Oh, so, oh Sanok, let me know how you get on. Did you Have you been through all of it? Have you been through all of the course? Uh, but fantastic. Uh, thank you for that. And good luck for tonight. Uh, so this is the course, the theory test course. <clears throat> Excuse me. I spent thousands of hours um, finding out and years finding out what your struggles are. What do you actually struggle with? What questions? Like, th th just this, why are people getting mixed up with this sign? Well, because they're thinking it's this one. They're getting mixed up and they don't see the difference. Okay, well, I'll explain the difference. I will show you and explain to you. I'll show you why you're getting mixed up and I'll make it super, super easy for you to understand. Signaling at roundabouts, I'll make it super easy for you to understand. And that's what I've done, spending thousands of hours designing techniques and lessons and explanations to help you learn easily and it's all it's all in this course I'll share bits of it in my lives but it's all in this course with worksheets with fact lists and video tutorials and all the official questions and case studies and more and more and more it's clear from the arrows it is for you uh, but it wasn't for other people Annie so many people get that question wrong um and it's the, the, if you don't look at them together, I can see why. Do I have courses for hazard perception? Yeah, hazard perception is in my course. But if you sign up for this course, you get a whole hazard perception course for free as well. OK, so there's a hazard perception in my course, but you get you get hazard perception as well. If they're going straight common sense, it's two way traffic. 
Yeah, um, it doesn't really help to tell people it's common sense if they're getting it wrong. That doesn't really help them. What helps them is to say, yeah, I understand why you got it wrong. But now when somebody explains it, it becomes much easier, doesn't it? That's that's the kind of way, isn't it? Let's be kind to people. Um, because some people think like, mm, I must be stupid if I didn't get that right. And we don't want to do that. You will be 100% prepared to pass when you go through when you go through this course. It's helped over 5,000 people to pass so far. It's only uh, rah, rah, it's 69.95, everything that I'm offering today and giving to today, but I'm only charging the price of a one hour driving lesson. That's all it is. You should remember that getting on the road costs you thousands of pounds. By the time you've taken a driving uh, theory test, had driving lessons, taken a driving test, bought a car, paid for insurance, ex fuel, etc, etc, etc. That's thousands of pounds. Annie, we get it, thank you. <laughs> we paid thousands of pounds. And this is 34.99, a very small investment um, in your driving and not wasting money again and again and again um, on failing. Let me show you what's in it. Um, let me show you what's in the course, a one minute video, um, and then we'll come up, we'll be surely onto my box junctions questions to help you remember super easily. Uh, the link, um, have, a, have a try again. Sometimes when lots of people click at the same time, um, there's an issue slightly. Um, otherwise, otherwise go to, um, you can always go to testbuddy.app forward slash live. Just type those words in or screenshot and that's where it is. Is there a time limit to complete the course? No, there isn't. Yeah, the link is working for me. I've tested it on, on this and I've tested it on my iPad as well. Um, there's no time limit for the course. No, it's your course for life. Let me show you what's in it. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first. So you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way, so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. And if you suffer from anxiety, um, does anybody here suffer from test anxiety? Let me know. If you suffer from test anxiety, then what I, I, I became aware many years ago, it was amazing if you ever suffer from anxiety at all. Um, I, yeah, I, I became aware that people were failing driving tests, failing theory tests, um, not because they weren't able and because they didn't have the knowledge, but because they had a fear, test fear, said Miss Moss. Yeah, test fear. Um, so what I did is I became an NLP Master of Practitioner. There's two of my certificates are right there. Um, Ian says, your my hypnosis course has helped you. That's awesome, thank you. Um, I became an NLP Master of Practitioner and a Master Practitioner of Hypnosis. Um, so what I did then, after many months and many thousands of pounds doing that, is I created techniques and I put them into the course. And whether you go through these techniques, you don't go to your test feeling anxious. You don't fail due to anxiety. Um, they help you, you can go to your test feeling calm, feeling confident, feeling relaxed, feeling excited, feeling however you want to feel. Double tap the screen, give me some likes, that'd be amazing to see. I've also put in techniques to help you score well in your hazard perception test. I've also put in techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. And I'm sharing some of those techniques with you in a minute. Um, the three bonuses that I'm offering you are hazard perception course. So the free hazard perception course, there is a free hypnosis course. 
So I'm a master practitioner of hypnosis. I've, put, I've recorded three tracks, one for theory test, one for driving test and one for driving. So you can listen to a hypnosis track for all of those three things. The course is yours for life. I've given you two free ebooks. Yeah, the course, if you look here, if you click on the link, it does, it is uploading. So a couple of people saying it's not uploading. It is uploading for me, so it is working. Um, maybe just keep on trying. I'm sorry if you're having a problem, but if you screenshot and later on go, because it's only while I'm live this offer, but the link is always there. So you can do it later if, if necessary. So keep on trying. Thank you, 97 Shay. Um, you're going to get £35 worth of bonuses if you sign up while I'm live. You only pay once. You, there's no time limit. Um, someone's asked me, a couple of people asked me, is there a time limit on the course? No, there isn't. You can use it for as long as you need it. I recommend you don't take too long. But most people take between two and six weeks. If you have learning difficulties, if you don't speak English as a first language, if you're extremely busy with work, children or whatever, then you will take longer than six weeks. But most people take between two and six weeks. As soon as you start it, you'll start to see and hear how you're going to pass. These are some people that have used it and passed. We'll do this, then we're going to ask Annie. If you've got anything to ask me, then please get ready to ask me a question. We'll spend two or three minutes answering questions and then we'll move on to my next lesson. So let's read some of these reviews because I love them. Um, I passed my theory test yesterday after a failed 13 attempts and through your course I passed. I passed my theory sixth time after buying your course. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't expire. This course does not expire. I'm loving the course. It's so helpful. I passed yesterday and used so many of your techniques. Thank you very much. My daughter passed her theory after going through this course. The course is £34.99, but it's all pinned there for you to see. Let's go see if there any questions. You have your theory on the 16th of March. Any help? James, yeah, I'm helping you all day. Um, I'm all day, all morning. So I've got, I'm on, on here for two and a half hours. Molly, I'm going over hazard perception today. I went over hazard perception yesterday, Molly. And that lesson from yesterday is, um, is in my, um, on my YouTube channel. Can the course content be completed within one week? Clifford, um, people have completed it in one week. So I don't know how much time you've got during the day, do I, each day? But yes, I know people have completed it in one week. And Jordan, am I live tonight? Yes, I'll be live. Uh, I'll be live at 6.30 tonight. What I need tonight is loads and loads of comments, okay? Loads and loads of comments. Will the new highway code make any difference in the theory test? Not until later on this year, okay? Later on this year, the DVSA will change some questions. I don't know how many, but it'd be not yet. So later this year is the is the email that I got. Um, let's have a look. Please note, I've got some changes from the DVSA and email, and it says, please note, these changes do not include the changes to the highway code. These will be updated later in the year. So you can take your mind off the new highway code in relation to your theory test. You don't have to worry about that at the moment. Can you help with the signs you had a few minutes ago? What do you mean, Chelsea? Do you mean these two signs? Let me just put yes or no quickly. Do you mean these two? Uh, and somebody else asked me something earlier. I said, ask me in, in the ask any time. And I can't remember what that was now. You passed yesterday, user, that's awesome. How many times would you advise doing a mock test before? If you're on my course, I would advise doing all 16 mock tests and then trying to, uh, then doing five mock tests, making sure you pass one after the other. So these, these two signs, these two signs, they're both warning signs, and they're both warning you, the triangular shaped signs and they are warning signs. This one is warning you of two-way traffic crossing your route ahead. They're both warning you about two-way traffic. Guys, why would you be getting a warning sign? Oh, they did arm signals, well done. Why would you get a warning sign about two-way traffic? What kind of road must you be on if you're getting warned about two-way traffic because we normally have two-way traffic don't we so what would what kind of road must you be driving on 
if you are getting warned about two-way traffic. What kind of road? Can anybody put the answer in there? A one-way road, yeah? You must be on a one-way road and you're getting warned it's going to be two-way, okay? Does that make sense? Put Double tap the screen if that makes sense. Because normal traffic is two-way, okay? These are both warning you about two-way. This one, two-way traffic is going to cross over in front of you. Look at the arrows. This one, two-way traffic is going to be straight ahead of you. As you're driving a straight on, straight on, it's going to be two-way traffic, not one way anymore, two-way. Two-way traffic straight ahead of you, two-way traffic crossing over in front of you. Notice the difference. When you notice them, you can see how super easy it is. Yeah, does that make sense? Now, yeah, somebody asked me about arm signals. Is that person still here? Do you still want to know about arm signals before I move on? Thank you. Anybody know? Let me know. I, I want a, a fair few people to want to, to know about arm signals. And if a fair few people do, then I will cover it in a couple of minutes. I'm not going to cover lights. I've not got any slides to cover lights. Um, I need to find out exactly how I can help everybody to understand. Yeah, okay, so I'll cover arm signals just now. Let me just answer this question. What are the test manoeuvres? The test manoeuvres are, oh yeah, arm signals. I'll cover those arm signals now. The test manoeuvres are um, pull up on the right-hand side of the road and reverse back two car lengths. I call that pull up right reverse, okay? So they'll ask you to pull up on the right-hand side of the road and reverse for two car lengths and then drive on again. That's one of them. Um, parallel park is number two. Um, reversing into a bay is number three and driving forwards into a bay and reversing out again is number four. The, the course is available to buy anytime I'm live, yeah. The course is available to buy at any time, but with all the bonuses, it's while I'm live. Let's cover arm signals. I want you to remember, this is super, super, super important that you remember, there are three arm signals we need to learn just in case we need them or just in case somebody else needs them and we need to know what they're talking about. Just the same as we need to know how to do CPR. We need to know how to save somebody's life just in case. That makes sense. We need to know what to do if we break down on a motorway just in case. Okay, so three arm signals. Because if our indicators are broken, we can't tell people we're turning right or left. If our brake lights are broken, we can't tell people we're slowing down. So there's three arm signals, not four, there's three of them. That's really important. So if you turn that all your arm signals are going to use your right arm because it's your right arm that can stick out of your window. You can't put your left arm out of the window. OK, only your right arm. So if you're turning, do this with me. And for each arm signal, put D for done. For your, if you're turning right, you're going to stick your right arm out of the window. Stick your right arm out of the window like this. OK. Yep. Yes. I'm all. So let, is, is that super easy, isn't it? If you're turning right, do just the same as you are riding a bike and you put your right arm out of the window like that. Yeah, right, right arm out the window. Super easy, isn't it? Yeah, so now you know one of them. There's only three to learn and you know one of them. Cool. Now, if you are turning left, if you want Samuel, Samuel, Doug, you're right, but you might already be on your journey. You might already be driving around, mightn't you? OK, if you're turning left, you put your right arm out of the window and you do forward circles, circling your arm forwards. OK, does that make sense? If you're turning left, circle your hand as if you're pointing your arm over towards the other side of the car. You're pointing over towards the left. So circles for left. Yeah, cool. So remember that. If you put a D for done, let me know when you've done that one. Circles for left. Double tap the screen if I'm helping you. OK, and there's only one more to learn. And this one is super, super easy. This one is super, super easy. If your brake lights aren't working 
and you need, you need to tell people you're slowing down, you put your arm out of the window and you put it up and down. Up and down means slowing down. Up and down means slowing down. Up and down means slowing down. Super easy. See, see how easy they are. There's only three we need to learn. So put a D for done when you've done up and down for slowing down. Or oh, said the words out loud. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. So the, when you have to answer a theory test question, there'll be four options. And people are always saying to me, well, what does the fourth option mean? It's a made up one. Because when you're doing theory tests, multiple choice, there are always four options. So they just do a made up one. Okay, does that make sense? One will be right, one will be left, and one will be slowing down, up and down for slowing down. So who asked me that question? Have you learned the arm signals? I talked about dual carriageways yesterday, user cars am. So go on to my, um, click on this link, go to my YouTube account and you'll see yesterday's video on there. And everything you need is all in this course. The course is 34, Hannah. The course is 34.99 if you sign up today. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube account by clicking on this link. Um, follow me on TikTok. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok because I will be doing this kind of help all the time. And maybe I will put arm signals in there again. Um, just to remind people how, just to remind you how easy they are to learn. Okay, so let me tell you who I am. What I want you to do is... Oh, box junctions, doing that box junction now. So how fortunate is that for you, 97 Shay? I think I am. Um, so tell me where you're watching me from. So I want to know, I've got 336 people. Can 336 people all tell it me, um, all tell me where you're watching me from while I introduce myself? Is one hour lessons enough twice a week? One hour lessons, do you mean driving lessons? And if it is, yes. Hi from London, Suffolk, Southampton, Birmingham, Ireland, Shropshire, Cambridge, Bournemouth, Leeds, Rochdale, <sighs> North West London, Ow, 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 how do you say that? Ow. Oswestry, Portsmouth, Bristol, Newcastle, Scotland, Brighton, Wirral. Hi everybody. Yes, Seleka, it is. Norfolk, Nottingham, Tyneside, Rochdale, Leicester, Brockley. Thank you for joining me. Keep putting your comments in. Bambi, originally from the Philippines. My brother's just moved to the Philippines with my three little nephews. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, Oldham, Kidderminster, Doncaster. Okay, so my name is Annie. Keep putting them in. I'll let you tell you who I am. My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. Newton Willows, that's why I went to college to do become a nursery nurse many, many years ago. <laughs> 40, 40 years ago. I'm an ADI, a proved driving instructor. Been doing that for about 10 years. I'm also on the official register for driving instructor trainers. And I've been doing that for a number of years as well. And I've also been a theory test expert for a number of years because so many people were telling me I'm struggling to pass my theory test. Um, eventually, I put all of my course that I was delivering into this theory test course I've just pinned for you. Um, recently, I've been awarded most innovative driving school for the course. Course. My driving school is called Spot On. My driving school is in Cheshire and it has been awarded um, uh, Superior Achievement and Excellence, which I'm really, really proud of. Hi, John Wharton. I've not seen what else you put on there, but hi. Um, the DVSA have looked at my course and they um, have given me, they're really happy with my course. They've given me all of the official practice DVSA questions. Um, I've got them all here behind me in that um, in that green folder behind me. Um, and they've, I've got the updates on my computer right now. In fact, I printed them out yesterday, the latest updates. Um, many people have taken my course, thousands of people have taken my course, incredibly happy with it. Let me sh share one of them with you. I'll share this one with you. I won't read it all, don't worry. So this one says, um, 
I just wanted to let you know I passed my theory test today. If it wasn't for your course, I would never have done it. Your course explains things clearly and calmly. You have the magical ability to boost confidence in people. And for that, I thank you. Isn't that awesome? So uh, save the link. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why it's slow, but other people are using it. Um, there's a few people saying it's slow. So keep the devil child bay. Just save that link and try again later. Um, I don't know. I, ca I can't answer you. I just I don't I don't know. But all I can say is save the link or screenshot now and go to testbuddy.app forward slash live. Um, but I'm, I've clicked on the link and it's working for me. So I'm not sure um, what what the problem is for you. Anyway, test course. I'm just clicking on it now. And uh, now it's back to question time. Um, I'm just trying again. And let's look, have a look at this question. The question is, when may you enter a box junction? When may you enter a box junction? Um, let me just send a message to somebody. Okay, I'm just sending a message to somebody about that, see if they can do anything about it. Okay, so put your answer in. If you don't know, put IDK for I don't know. Uh, when may you enter a box junction? I'm going to make it super easy for you. I'm going to show you how box junctions are really, really easy to understand. Uh, good luck for today, guitar, George Guitar Boy. Um, <laughs> Seleka, you know it. Okay, so lots of people saying uh, the correct answer, some people saying the wrong answer, some people saying you don't know. What I want to do is make it really easy for you to understand um, and make it easy for you to understand and easy for you to get right now every single time. Okay, so yellow box junctions. This is a picture of a yellow box junction. Look, there's loads of paint on the road and more paint on the road means there are more restrictions on that part of the road. Okay, more paint equals more restrictions. So they're designed to keep parts of the road clear. The link works if you type it in on your computer. So type the words testbuddy.app forward slash live. I'm really sorry. I've just emailed somebody to say what's going on here with my tech team. So I've just emailed them. Um, so it's working for a few people, but not for others. So and that's not normal. But yeah, type it in on your computer and you should be fine. Says Flying Bambo. Thank you very much, Flying Bambo. Um, yeah. OK, so yellow box junctions are designed to keep parts of the road clear. The rules are very simple. If you don't know them now, don't worry about it. I will help you. But the rules are actually really very simple. You should only go into a box junction if you're not going to get stuck there. Remember, stuck there. OK, so don't go into a box junction if you could possibly get stuck in the box junction because if you are stuck in a box junction when the lights change you're sitting in the middle of a box junction in your car and it's going to be really embarrassing that other traffic can't keep on moving okay so how do you know you're not going to get stuck there let's go through that first of all look at the blue car the blue car is at green traffic lights now green means go Green means go. Yes, he did, Tony. But the blue car isn't going. The blue car is staying behind the line. Why is he staying behind the line? Why is the blue car not going? The blue car wants to go where the red arrow is pointing. The blue car wants to go where the red arrow is pointing. Why is he not going? Yes, I am, Centel. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's no space. That orange car is not moving. The orange car is staying where it is. It's blocked. 
it's, there's traffic, there's a build up of traffic and there's nowhere for the blue car to go. And if the blue car goes and waits here where the arrow is, he would be in the box junction. He would be in the box junction. I can't put it up any higher, it just won't work. Just doesn't go. Uh, the blue, it's in the box junction, and if the lights change, it's going to be stuck there. Cool. Now look at the green car. The green car has gone into the box junction and it's waiting there. But it's not stuck. It's just waiting for the white cars to get past. And when the white cars have gone past, it can turn where this blue arrow's where the blue arrow is. The green car is just waiting for the white cars to go and then it can turn into his road. His exit road, the road he's going into, is not blocked. His exit road is clear of traffic. He's just waiting for oncoming traffic to pass by. So, therefore, you can wait in a box junction if your exit road is clear and if you're waiting for oncoming traffic to pass by. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense or double tap the screen if that makes sense to you. In simple terms, do not enter the box till your exit is clear, yeah. And you're just waiting for oncoming traffic to pass is fine, yeah. In simple terms, in simple terms, the rules are very simple. Only go into a box junction if you're not going to potentially get stuck there. Getting stuck in a box junction is embarrassing and causes a, um, a, a delay for lots of other people. So the question is, when may you enter a box junction? Is it when there are fewer than two vehicles ahead, when your exit road is clear, or when traffic signs direct you. Don't you have to pull forward so cars can go either, either behind or in front of you? Look at this box junction here. There are two lanes. There's two lanes. The blue car is in the left lane. The green car is in the right lane. There's two lanes there. Don't go into a box junction unless your exit road is clear. Okay, so what is the answer here? Cool, I want loads more people to put the answer in. Let's make it much more interactive. How many options did you get to choose from on your test? Always four options on your test. Always four options on your test. And the answer here, are you absolutely right? The answer here is B, when your exit road is clear. Your exit road means the road you want to drive into. Does that now, double tap the screen if I have helped you at all. I0912, uh, this site here. Go to the link below. Okay, let's do another box junction question because people are getting mixed up and it's the wording that people struggle with. Let's make sure you understand the wording for this one. When may you stop and wait in a box junction? Thank you, L-U-G-C-I. Um, when oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right, when you're in a queue of traffic turning left, when you're in a queue of traffic going ahead or when you're on a roundabout, what's the right answer here? Yay, awesome. Okay, that's fantastic to see so many people getting this question correct. So the right answer... I, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yay, L-U-G-C-I. That's awesome. Oh, you must feel happy. <laughs> it's an awesome feeling, isn't it? This theory test is the first step to passing your driving test. Um, when you pass your driving test, it's an amazing feeling of freedom. Okay, so the right answer, yes, is when oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right. You know it's not when you're in a queue of traffic. You know you can't enter a box junction when you're in a queue of traffic. Don't worry about people behind you. Sometimes people behind you go, go on, go forward into the box junction. 
go forward, what are you doing waiting here? I wanna be able to go. When the lights change, I wanna be able to go. Okay, if you go into the box junction, who's gonna get into trouble? Who's going to get into trouble, guys, if you go into the box junction because this person behind you told you to go into the box junction? Is it you or the person behind? It's you, you are. You can't say, oh, well, I, I know I'm, I'm only 17, but the man in the car behind, he was like, go on, go. So I just went and I thought, I don't want to, I don't want to not do what he says. No, you will get into trouble. Please do not, you know the rules of the road. Other people who have been driving, like, I mean, I have been driving 36 years. If I wasn't doing this job, I wouldn't know the rules of the road as well as you know the rules of the road. Does that make sense? You know them better than your parents, than your friends, um, that who've been driving for many years, than your older, older relatives. You know the rules of the road. They don't as well. They don't know them as well. Does that make sense? My name's Annie. Let me know what questions you struggle with as we go through these lives. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm an audit registered trainer. I created this course to help you to pass your theory test. I was awarded the most innovative driving school. My driving school has been awarded superior achievement and excellence. The DVSA like my course and I get loads and loads and loads of reviews every single day of the year. Even Christmas Day, I get reviews telling me. Any chance on a couple of bike questions, please? Tony, no, I'm sorry, I don't cover bikes at all and I have not even had chance to look at the bike questions so I don't know. Um, I've got the bike questions from the DVSA but I've, I've got not created a course on them yet so I'm really sorry I can't do that for you. Um, motorway does a maximum minimum speed i ha i do a lesson on maximum minimum speed i did it yesterday motorway studs i do a lesson on that as well so keep watching me click on this link to subscribe to my youtube account um tony i may i may well do it for i haven't got a motorbike I haven't got a motorbike course yet. So if I do motorbike questions, people might say, can I have some more help on motorbike and I can't give it. But I might put a, pop a couple of questions into my TikTok account. Um, so keep watching. So the next thing I'm going to cover with you is my two-step question technique. In my course, I have a five-step question technique to hand help you answer any question theory test question. I'm going to share two steps of that with you now. To answer me this question, whoever second guesses themselves, whoever thinks, well, that's the right answer and think, actually, no, 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 I must be wrong. And you change the answer and then you get the wrong answer. Is it Kia? Is that Kia? Kia, Kia Jane, I can help you. This course will help you. Whoever second guesses themselves, put some me's in the comments if it's you. And sometimes you can end up putting a rubbish answer. You second guess everything. You're not on your own. Look how many me's are coming up and that won't be all of them. Not everybody's going to be putting a comment in, but loads of people second guess themselves when you haven't got the confidence in yourself. What I want to do is go through a two step technique I'm going to use a fairly simple question to demonstrate a two-step technique. Then I'll use a bit of a harder question later on. OK, so let's go through this technique. The question I'm going to use is, where should you avoid overtaking? Where should you avoid overtaking? Just after a bend in a one-way street on a 30 mile per hour road, approaching a dip in the road so that's yeah tony absolutely so that is the four possible options you can probably answer them if you want to but what i essentially want to do is go through this technique and demonstrate it awesome okay brilliant i'm loving seeing some different answers coming in because that means my technique is going to help you so first thing you're going to do is get rid of two rubbish answers where should you avoid overtaking? Let's get rid of the rubbish answers. 
so double tap the screen guys give me some likes that would be really really amazing let's see if i can get more likes than i've ever had before on this live because it's already doing really really well okay so let's get rid of two rubbish answers tell me guys can you look on here and see one or two completely rubbish answers put um put the answer and then a question mark next to it to say that's rubbish put the answers and then put a question mark after it to say that is absolute rubbish awesome brilliant some really, really great answers and thank you for the likes. Hearts flying up the screen makes it makes me feel awesome. Thank you. OK, so the rubbish answers that I got rid of are in a one way street and on a 30 mile per hour road. What I want you to do is put yes if you agree with me or just a Y for yes if you agree with me or put no if you're confused as to why they are rubbish. So I want to know you properly understand that is absolute rubbish. Where should you avoid overtaking? So a couple of no's coming in saying, why? Well, in, when you're in a one-way street, let me show you these two cars, a one-way street, everyone's traveling the same direction and it's okay to overtake each other. It's okay to go at a different speed on a one-way street, okay? You're all going the same way. Uh, not a motorway, not a dual carriageway, but a one-way street. It's okay to overtake on both sides, okay? On a 30 miles per hour road, it's absolutely okay. If you're on a 30 miles per hour road, would you overtake a bicycle? If you're on a 30 mile per hour road, would you overtake a bicycle? Pauline, go to this website and ask them they'll put you onto Chris you would overtake a bicycle wouldn't you absolutely if you didn't overtake a bicycle that had let's say somebody going incredibly incredibly when it's safe Sarah of course it's always when it's safe though isn't it yeah absolutely only when it's safe but yes if you didn't overtake a bicycle you could be behind a bicycle for miles going very very slowly okay so get rid of those two it's okay to overtake on those okay so now we're left with two possible options when you get rid of two rubbish answers you're then left with two possible options and that means you've got a 50 50 chance of getting the answer right that means all of a sudden the theory test is so much easier so much more chance of getting the answer correct now the next thing you need to do the next part of my technique J game old will yay <laughs> congratulations do you feel awesome okay the next part of this technique the question is where should you avoid overtaking where should you avoid overtaking and the um next step of the te next part of that technique is to think about the safest option. What's the safest option or what is not safe? Think about that word safest, okay? So let me just go through it with you. It's okay to overtake after a bend. Thank you, Alia. But you can't see what's in a dip in the road. A dip in the road is when the road goes down and up again and then flat again and this down bit here you don't know what's there so it's not okay to overtake when you're approaching a dip in the road but it is okay to overtake after a bend look at this blue car is approaching a bend this arrow is after the bend and it's okay to overtake after a bend oh perfume thank you so the right answer there is when when should you avoid overtaking is if you're approaching a dip in the road. Do you get that now? Owners and keepers. Um, Karina, I did that yesterday. Go to my YouTube channel and be able to see it. OK, if you ask me at question time, then I might give you a little bit of a, a tip about it. OK, OK, so approaching a dip in the road. Do you get that? Double tap the screen if you get that two step question technique. I'm going to go through it again with another couple of questions. Two step question technique. 
get rid of the two rubbish answers and then safest option. Cool, so you're planning to tow a caravan. This is the next one. You're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? This is where I get my caravan out. You're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? And the options are anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable, or stabiliser. I'm going through it again, Ollie. I'm going through it another couple of times, so stay with me. Antilop, what will, what will, you're planning to tow a caravan, what will help the handling of the combination? Which of these four is the correct answer? Fab. Okay, don't worry because I'm going, I'm going to go through it with you. The first thing I want you to do is understand the question. Who knows what they mean by handling of the combination? Put a yes or a no in. If you know what I mean, do you know what that means? Or do you not know what that means? Handling of the combination. Cool. So some yeses and some noes in there. You never understand this. Awesome, brilliant. Okay, let me explain it to you. So, the combination is the car and the caravan joined or combined together. Okay, that's all it means. That's the combination. Handling is how they cope together, how they are managing together. If they're not managing very well, well, the caravan could start to sway like this. The caravan could start to sway. That's called snaking. And if the caravan is snaking, that's not good. It can get bigger and bigger and bigger and end up like this. Okay, so the, the combination is these two combined together. And the handling is to making sure the coping, okay, they are managing well together. Okay, does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense or not. Put some yeses or double tap the screen if that makes sense. Double tap the screen for me if that makes sense. Fab. So back to the question. You're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? Is it anti-lock brakes, power steering, breakaway cable or stabiliser? Let's do the same again. The first thing we're going to do is get rid of two rubbish answers. Which of those are absolute rubbish? Can you give me the two rubbish ones or one of the rubbish ones and put a question mark at the end of it? So which of those are rubbish? Give me, put the answers down and then put a question mark after them. Lots of people are putting the same thing as I would put. Luke Owen, yep. Yeah. Flying Bamboo, yep, yeah, absolutely. Cheesy, yep, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so I, for the two rubbish answers, the rubbish ones, if we're going to get rid of them, are anti-lock brakes and power steering. Put a yes if you agree with th that they're rubbish or put no if you don't understand why they are rubbish. Put yes if you agree that they're rubbish. Yes, 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 we all agree. The anti-lock brakes, your brakes, anti-lock brakes are what helps you if you're skidding. Okay, if, you, if, you, if your wheels are about to lock, and you're going to skid, anti-lock brakes stops that from happening. It doesn't stop these two from swaying. Power steering makes your steering wheel really easy to move. When I learned to drive 36 years ago, it was really hard to do lots and lots of steering. And now it's really, really easy to do lots and lots of steering because you have power steering. Steering is dead. The steering wheel is dead easy, easy to move because you have power going to it. OK, so but, but that easy steering won't stop that from happening. Make sense? So we get rid of those two. We've now only got 
two options left. Yeah, long time ago, Mohammed. We've only got two options left. We've got breakaway cable and we've got stabilizer. And we need to now think about the safest option. Which of those, um, you're, you're, t you're planning to tow a caravan, what will help the handling of the combination? What's the safest option? So you need to actually know what the two options, what these two things are. What, what actually is a breakaway cable? What actually is a stabiliser? So we can find out, what, think about what the safest option is. Let me, do you know what these two are? Put a yes in the comments if you know what they are and put a no in the comments. See, I want to know what most people think because I can skip by questions, skip by slides if you all know the answer and I can go give an explanation if you don't know the answer. So I've got a yes and no. I don't know, no, no, no. Okay, so morning, Andrew. Fantastic. And some people's explaining it there, so well done. Okay, let me go through it with you. This is a picture of a breakaway cable. One side of the breakaway cable fits to the car. The other side of the breakaway cable fits to the caravan's brakes. Breakaway fits to the brakes. Now, if these two, if the car and the caravan are not connected properly by mistake, if you've made a mistake and they're not connected properly and they break away from each other, what could happen is this caravan is on wheels, isn't it? It will keep on rolling, 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 rolling and it could crash into people, it could kill people, it could smash into cars, into shops, into traffic, cause an awful lot of damage. That's a breakaway cable is in case these break away from each other. And what will happen is that the cable would snap and it would put the caravan's brakes on so the caravan wouldn't move any further. OK, so just say this out to yourself. A breakaway cable fits to the brakes in case they break away from each other. And that is a safety um, thing. And you have to have one of those because it's super dangerous if the car, if the caravan rolls away. Does that make sense? Put some yeses in if that makes sense to you now. What a breakaway cable is. Yes, Le Leanne, good, good response. Put some yeses in if that now makes sense. What a breakaway cable is in case the car and the caravan break away from each other and the brakes come on the caravan. <laughs> Easy when you think of it like that, isn't it? Yes, awesome. Let's move on to the next one. The next thing I'll talk to you about, the next option was a stabiliser. And a stabiliser looks like this metal bar. And it's fitted, hi, hi Eddie, the stabiliser fits here, between one side to the car and one side to the caravan. And it's that metal bar, thick metal bar, and it keeps them more stable. It stops the caravan from swaying, okay? So a stabiliser keeps the car and the caravan stable, just like stabilisers on a child's bike keeps the bike and the child stable. A stabiliser on a car and caravan keep the car and the caravan more stable. That makes sense. So, what will help the handling of a combination? Is it breakaway cable or stabiliser? Is it C, breakaway cable, or D, stabiliser? What will help the handling of the combination? Is it breakaway cable? Will a breakaway cable help keep them steady? Or will a stabiliser help keep it steady? Which of, which of those two helps keep it steady? 
So we've still got lots and lots of wrong answers coming in. A breakaway cable is in case they break away from each other. A stabiliser keeps it more stable. So which will help the handling of the combination? Yeah, it's D. Absolutely, the answer is D, a stabiliser. A breakaway cable is in case they break away from each other. It's a cable. It's it, Look at the cable here. Look, it's a, it's a red cable. It's not going to keep it more steady. It's, it's going to help. It's going to snap if they break away from each other. So don't worry about it. If you don't get it straight away, that's absolutely fine. That's why I'm recapping. That's why I'm recapping. Don't worry about it. You may need to explain it to yourself. It's, explain it to somebody else. Rewatch it. It won't be the breakaway cables question is it about the combination yes it is it is absolutely so don't worry if you didn't get it you are not the only one okay cool so you're and it's, it's sometimes it's about the wording it's about it's about words that you wouldn't use yourself isn't it handling of a combination is not words that you'd use yourself um okay so silly question but do you do one-to-one -one? not a silly question at all but i don't do one-to-one -one, but i can put you on to chris benstead who does one-to-ones okay so he'd advise you to buy my course and do a one-to-one -one with you go go to here screenshot right now and ask them for about a one-to-one -one theory and they'll put you on to chris um, and you can decide whether to have them or not. Um, there's no questions are silly. If you're not trying to be silly. Okay, so. Zara, what is it? You don't have a silly question, do you? You're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. You should. Let's go through this two-step question technique again. You're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. So just think about that. What do lights do all the time, all day and night? What do traffic lights do? Traffic lights are on green, what should you do? Let's get rid of two rubbish answers so that I know you're putting rubbish answers in. Put the rubbish answers in and then put a question mark for me. So put a rubbish answer in and then put a question mark in for me so that I know that you're giving me the rubbish answers. So I'm looking for rubbish answers here. You're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time. Which of those are the rubbishest, <laughs> the most rubbish, the most silly answers there? Is accelerate hard, be ready to stop, maintain your speed or brake hard? Abby Rose Smith, I agree with you. I think it's accelerate hard is really rubbish and break hard is really rubbish as well. So those two are complete and utter rubbish answers. We would get rid of them. They don't exist. This is our two step question technique. Step number one is get rid of two rubbish answers. We've got rid of those two and now we're only left with two possible options. We can't now, we're much less likely to change the answer to a really, really silly answer if you're second guessing yourself. Does that make sense? So you're approaching traffic lights that have been green for some time you should. Now, the second part of this technique is to think about safest option. Which one of those two, if you're driving towards traffic lights that have been green for some time, what's the safest thing to do? Is it be ready to stop deer? Or is it maintain your speed? What's the safest and most sensible thing to do. Let's just give you a scenario. You're driving towards traffic lights and you're going at 38 miles per hour. And you can see traffic lights that have been green for quite a while. Should you be ready to stop or should you maintain your speed? What is the safest and most sensible thing to do? Absolutely right. Most of you, you know the answer here, don't you? The, the most safest and most sensible thing to do is to be ready to stop. Of course it is. And that's my two-step question technique. 
Did you like it? How was that for you? How was my two-step question technique for you? Let me know. You failed four times now. That's why I've created this course. That's why it's there. That's why I have spent thousands of hours putting this course together for you to help you to pass on your next attempt. Um, okay, so I've still got my best lesson to come. I don't know if I've got time to do it. I've still got signs made easy to come, which I'll go through in a minute. It makes it so clear, fantastic. Um, I put that technique in. In my course, it's a five-step technique. I've shared the two best techniques with you right now because the pass rate is 47.1%. That means 53% of people are failing their theory test, which is too high. Who agrees with me that it's too high? 53% of people are failing. Just came out of your test. I passed. Thank you so much for your help. Mass 788. Oh, take a deep breath and congratulate yourself. Congratulations. And thanks for popping on and letting me know. Um, People are failing because it's hard. It's not hard if you taught, if you are taught. If you look at questions and try and memorise answers, then it is hard. If somebody teaches you about that particular topic, it's not hard. Think of everything you know in your life that some other people don't know. And because you've been taught or because you've learnt it, how long is this session for? About another 40 minutes, I think. Do I cover crossings? Yes, I do cover crossings. Everything you need to know is in this course. Um, and I do cover crossings in my live lessons. People are failing and then they're saying to me, it's embarrassing, it's uh, a waste of, it's frustrating, a waste of time, it's a waste of money um, and failing is, means they can't even go and book their driving test. They should have come to you first. Uh, what I want to do, what I am doing in this live, what I am doing in my on my other account, in my um, YouTube account, etc. what I am doing in this course the step-by-step -step process is teaching you to pass your theory test, not looking at the questions and memorising the answers. Is that what you do? Let me know who buys an app. Buys an app. Who buys an app and... Um, you put me off there for a second. Who, who buys an app and goes straight to do mock tests? Who, who does that? Let me know. Um, if you're having, um, lots of people are having a problem saying they can't go on to, get on to the course, then just screenshot and save that link for later. It will upload for you. Um, just a little bit of an issue. It'll be sorted very, very soon, okay? So if you can't, if you're struggling to buy the course, just screenshot that link or click on the link and save it and it will be back up and running very, very soon. What I want to do is teach you to pass. And I've created theory test course um, and I've put into the course stuff like work worksheets, video, like this one here, video tutorials, about 90 of them, tutorials that teach you, fact lists that you can listen to because you learn without even trying when you're listening. You can listen as you're shopping, you can listen as you're brushing your teeth, you can listen as you're doing your housework, you can, you can listen while you're in the gym. So you can listen while you're doing other stuff and learn without even trying. The course is for how long? The course is your course to have forever and it take you between two and six weeks. Some people go through it in a week, most people between two and six weeks. Um, so it's got everything you need to be 100% prepared to pass. Video, the tutorials are all videos, yes, absolutely. So video tutorials in the, not the gym, not the gym for some people. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, it's helped more than 5,000 people to pass so far. That figure goes up every single day. Um, the, the cost, what it's worth is 34.99. What I charge today while I'm live is, is only 34.99. It's worth 69.95. I only charge 34.99. For it. When would you listen then? You wouldn't listen to the fact list while you're at the gym. Why not? When would you listen? When would you listen? You've got a problem with your account, then you can't, I can't help you on here. You need to go to these people. You need to email them. I can't help you while I'm in a live. When would you, ooh, dropped it. When would you listen to a list of facts? It only takes about the list, for every list is about three, four, five minutes. When you're washing up, you could listen to the facts. That's when you listen to my, watch my lives. Yeah, what else could you be doing while you're, could you be walking the dog? Walking, yeah. 
What else could you be doing? And when you're listening, you're learning without even trying. When you're relaxing, okay, when you're driving, you could listen when you're driving, but you wouldn't need them if you were driving, would you? On the school run, uh, when you're not working, yeah. Um, so what happens when you listen is you, the stuff goes into your unconscious mind and you're learning it without even trying to learn it. Uh, walking and chilling, cleaning, because when you listen to the word, when you listen to a song, you don't think to yourself, um, I'll really, really try and learn those words. You just do learn the words, okay? You just do. Um, and that's what happens when you listen to the fact list. You just do learn. Um, you're cooking now. You could do it when you're cleaning, walking and chilling, doing your housework. Absolutely. Let me show you what's in the course. Um, we'll go over some questions, answer some questions for you, and then we'll be on to the next lesson, which I will be covering. Um, I'll put the letter CC. I don't know what that means. What we're we, what we covering, uh, and then I'll be going through signs made easy. Let me show you what's in the course. One minute video. Let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're a hundred percent test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course. There are fourteen different theory test topics. Let me show you what's in the accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. I just responded to somebody there. And if you suffer from, te from test anxiety, you... Um, I have created techniques that help you get rid of your anxiety and start to feel calm and confident. There are techniques to help you score well in your hazard perception test. There are techniques to help you um, with any multiple choice questions. And there are free bonuses as well if you sign up while I'm live. All the bonuses are worth $34.95. You'll only pay once. You'll use it for as long as you need to. And you will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass. Let's go through some questions. And I think I'm going to have to finish because I have got a technical issue. So I'm going to finish, but I will come back on later. <coughs> Excuse me. I will be back on later. So have you got any questions for me? Let me know. You have your theory on the 16th of March. Any help? Well, that's what I'm doing here, isn't it? I'm helping you every single day. I'm here helping you um, to pass your theory test. So can some, the website is OK now. OK, so if it's OK, I can, I can, that means I can stay on. So can anybody who's been trying to go on to my course, can you test it out for me and let me know if you've managed to buy the course? I'll just click the link there for you. Um, and that'd be awesome if you could try that out for me. Um, and if I don't have to go, that'd be awesome. I can stay on and do my signs made easy. Can we log into place on our courses? Can we use, you can use an iPhone and app at the same time. I don't know if you can use them at the same time, Ian. Why, why would you want to use it on your phone and your iPad at the same time? Um, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know that. Um, new driver program. Can you log into two places at the same time? <laughs> I'll do signs, yeah, so what I want someone to do is just confirm that my link is working now for me because some of you have been trying to sign up for it and you've not been able to. So I've pinned it there for you. Um, yeah, road signs coming up very, very soon. It's been amazing. I just stumbled on your live, my daughter, and made a pact to take it this year. Yay, Rebel, that's awesome. No, it stops showing. You can't log into your your course on two different devices at the same time. OK, um, so and you wouldn't you shouldn't want to, should you? That's not what you should be wanting to do anyway. You can only use it one. So, OK, so one device at a time you can log into. OK, yeah, awesome. Um, so the course, as I've just explained to you, if you now, whatever I've covered, 
you just managed to purchase this second flying bamboo thank you i think you're the first person to have a problem thank you so much for letting me know so if you have learned what the difference is between these two signs this morning with me if you have learned about signaling approaching roundabouts if you have learned about motorway signs if you've learned about box junctions and how super easy to understand box junctions are or the two-step technique to answer any theory test question if you now understand what a breakaway cable and a stabiliser is because of what I've explained then you know that this course will help you to pass your theory test on your first or on your next attempt and it's only the price of one single one hour driver lesson while I'm live subscribe to, you can click on this link also to subscribe to my youtube account you're upset you're late don't worry the best bit's coming the best bit's coming so if you're buying your course i keep you keep it forever mr h it, it, there's no expiration date on the course no uh, so, um, don't forget to like what what i'm doing now double click the screen give me some likes that'd be really great i've been live for two hours now and i'm going to stay on and do a couple more things with you um so please double tap the screen to show me your appreciation that'd be awesome i've been going through the course when putting the kids to bed yay lizzie mag hi how are you um charlie boy good luck for today Let's um, listen, positive thinking. Charlie Boy, positive thinking. Let's sit, put that in again with a smiley face, okay? What you focus on is what you get. So focus on being confident and telling yourself you're going to do the very, very best you can and that will lead to a pass. Tell yourself that. So put that comment in again with a smiley face. It's question time. Missed that, Carlos. I'm, I'm going to put this Friday. You're awesome. Come on, Charlie boy, put it in again with a smiley face. Confidence in yourself. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover. Catalytic converters. So many people. Yay! I have my chest today and I'm going to do amazing, Charlie boy. Awesome. You are. You are going to do amazing. There's no point in telling yourself anything different, is there? What is the point? There is no point. It's not going to help you. Uh, I've got to say, but I'm not going to, as I've not, you've not studied K9. There's, yeah, there's nothing I could do about that. Just do the very best you can. And if you don't, keep on coming back to these lives or, and, or sign up for this course. This course will help you 100% be prepared. Okay, what's the purpose of a catalytic converter? Is it to reduce fuel consumption, to reduce the risk of fire? to reduce harmful exhaust gases, to reduce engine wear. If you don't know, put IDK. But IDK, stay with me if you've got your theory test coming up very soon, because I'm going to help you. And if you, I can't say the name, uh, Kariman, awesome, awesome, fantastic. Thanks for letting me know it's, it's all working as well. Okay, so what's the purpose now? For those of you who do know the answer, just let me, just tell me this. Have you memorised the answer? Put M if you've memorised the answer. Or do you properly understand the answer? Put the letter U if you understand. I want to know how many people have memorised it. And if you have, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I want to know how many people memorise and how many people understand. And the reason I want to know is because in your theory test, the question might be worded differently to this what to this. And then if it's worded differently, you might get the answer wrong. When are we going live again? Tonight at half past six? Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm going to try and get home from work in time. Okay, so a catalytic converter. Let me show you very, 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 very simple what a catalytic converter is. Okay. So a ca driving a car is not very environmentally friendly. Give me a thumbs up or something if you, there's one, the, yeah, there's one at four, sorry, I am, there's one at four o'clock as well. Yeah, four o'clock this afternoon and half past six this afternoon. Sorry, I forgot that one. Okay, a catalytic converter. Do you agree that driving a car is not very environmentally friendly? Dirty fumes are pumped out of our cars, aren't they? They're not environment. We should walk or use public transport uh, rather than drive a car with just us in it. We all know that, don't we? Because they're not very environmentally friendly. A catalytic converter, yes, walk 
dry, uh, sh walk short journeys, yeah. So a catalytic converter helps with that. Dirty fumes, look at this arrow, dirty fumes from the engine go into the catalytic converter. The catalytic converter does its stuff and cleaner fumes come out of the exhaust. Okay, let me show you that again. The word converts means changes, okay? A catalytic converter, it converts things, it changes things. Put a yes if you understand that. Yeah, some people do need to drive. Some people need to drive short journeys because they can't walk very well because they're in a rush because they've got babies or whatever. Uh, it's awful weather or whatever. But yeah, so you understand that the word converts means changes. So a catalytic converter, it converts or it changes dirty gases into cleaner gases. Dirty fumes from the engine go into the catalytic converter and then cleaner fumes come out because the catalytic converter converts them, changes them, does its stuff. Does that make sense? That's all you need to know. It's not very um, technical. And if you're a mechanic, you might say, well, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's all you need to know. So what's the purpose of a catalytic converter? Now pop your answer in if you didn't know it before and pop your answer in again if you did know it before and give me some likes to, to say to me, yes, I understand it even more now because you have helped me. Just let me know. So give me some likes if you understand it even more, but I want everyone to put their answers in. A catalytic converter. Does it reduce, they all say reduce, don't they? Does it reduce fuel consumption? Like breathing systems. Hmm. The risk of fire, harmful exhaust gases or engine work. Thank you, Amy, that's awesome to hear. Double tap the screen if I've helped you. I'm going to come on to my final lesson, which is probably the best lesson yet. It's, uh, it's um, or one of the best ones. It's my signs made easy. And the answer is absolutely right. Mariam, Job, you know it. It's to reduce harmful exhaust gases. Dirty fumes go into the catalytic converter. The catalytic converter does its stuff and clean air fumes come out. It's all in this course. If you're still confused, you can listen to it again later because this lesson will be on YouTube um, or you can sign up for the course where you get everything you need in the course to help you to pass your theory test. My name is Annie. Where are you watching me from, guys? And is this your first time watching me? Put some comments in. Let me know. Um, is it your first time watching me and where are you watching me from? And we'll move on to my final lesson. Uh, is it first time watching me and where are you watching me from? It's not your first time. Hi from Birmingham and Wales and London. It's not your first time. Yes, it's your first time. You're from Bradford. Hello and welcome. It's your second time Chelsea watching me. She first from London courtside, is that? No, from Oxford. You're watching you from your phone. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Wolverhampton, Cardiff. Okay, let me tell you who I am. Keep telling me where you're from. Hi, Charlie Smith from Hull. Hi, from Josh from Leeds. Uh, thank you, Adren. Hey, Adren. Um, I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I've been a grade A instructor for about 10 years. I'm also an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for trainers. Um, official register for driving sort of trainers. I'm also a theory test expert. Um, I've been doing theory test lessons for many years now, classroom based lessons. Then I put it into my lessons. I put them into a course and added so much more because you haven't got me in front of you in the course. So I made sure that everything is in this course. And for the course, I was awarded most innovative driving school. For my driving school, I was awarded superior achievement and excellence. And this is my uh, certificate here. Walk into the park with the kids watching you. Hello, enjoy your walk and hello children. How are you? Enjoy your time at the park. 
Um, the DVSA have looked at my courses, they're incredibly happy with what I have done and they have given me all the official DVSA practice questions. Where am I from? I teach in Knutsford and Northwich in Cheshire. Lots of people have gone through the course and really happy with the course and they've passed. You're 100% prepared to pass when you go through the course. You've got your first lesson, you're nervous, try and enjoy it. You're not, nothing, nothing's expected from you. They're, the instructor's there to teach you. Um, let's go through my signs made easy lesson with you. Um, now you need to know do you ever struggle with science questions? Whoever struggles with questions about road signs, I'm going to make them a bit easier for you over the next few minutes. You do struggle sometimes. Yeah, loads of people do. So road signs is the biggest topic in the theory test. There are more road science questions than any other topic. That's why I'm going to cover road signs with you now. Good news, I passed my theory test yesterday, all thanks to you. That's awesome. The lagging Brit, fantastic. Now, you need to know what the different shapes and colours of road signs mean. And that will help ans answering theory test questions so much easier. You will not get as mixed up if you know what the shapes are and know what the colours are. Does that make sense? I'm going to go through with this with you now. Look at these four signs. And what you'll see is that there's a bicycle in all four of them. There's a bicycle shape, but they all mean different things. They're all telling you different stuff. So you need to know the shapes and you need to know the colours so that you can answer theory test questions easily and you can, or more easily, and you can drive safely and make safe decisions while you're driving. So the first question we're going to cover is this one. What does this sign mean? Does it mean cyclists are prohibited? Route for cycles only? Warning cycle route ahead? Or parking place for pedal cycles? What does this sign mean? So put your answers in. If you don't know, put IDK for I don't know. And when you've done that, give me some likes. Double tap the screen. So there are some correct and, and there are some incorrect answers coming in. So don't worry if you don't know. Don't worry about it. If everybody knows the answer, then I will take this one out of this live lesson, wouldn't I? So just have a go at it. It's 260 people on here. Let's everybody have a go at the answer to this. Fab. So this is a circle shaped sign. And when you're looking at circle signs, this is all about circle signs. I want you to look at the shape of it. Notice, notice it's a circle and notice the colour. Because all circle shaped signs are orders. All circle signs are orders. A circle sign is an order, which means it's telling you what you must do or it's telling you what you must not do. You can easily remember that a circle sign is an order. If you make the shape of a circle with your hands. Do this now with me while you're holding your phone. Make a circle shape with your hands and then look at the circle shape and you'll see, look at the circle shape and you'll see it's got the shape of an O for order. So look at the circle shape and you see it's got the shape of an O for order. Now you can do that while you're answering your theory test questions when you're practicing. And you can do that to remind yourself when you're in your test. All circle signs are orders. OK, so circle signs are either blue or they are red. Circles and most circle signs are blue or they're red. Blue signs are telling us what we must do. Say this out loud, blue must do. Say it out loud, blue must do. Blue must do, this road is for you. That will help you to remember. Blue must do or this road is for you. 
Awesome. When you've done that, put the letter D for done. Blue must whisper it to yourself if you're in work or on the bus or on the train. Blue must do or this road is for you. If you're in the park, nobody will hear you. Blue must do or this road is for you. Awesome. Now, the other word for must do is mandatory. Mandatory. Do you know, have you ever heard the word? Do you understand the word mandatory? Princess, that's fantastic. Congratulations and thanks for popping on to let me know. Do you know the word mandatory or do you understand the word mandatory? Put yes or no in the comments. Let me know. You do awesome. That's brilliant. So you all know. Oh, somebody doesn't know the word mandatory. Most of you do. Is that right? If you don't know, I need to know what you know, and what you don't know. If you do know, I will rush on ahead. If you don't know, I will go a bit slower. Give me one second. I can't find my prop that I like to use. It's not here. I use this one. I use this one. I found a different one. OK, so you do know, I want you to just understand that you do know the word mandatory. I want to just tell you that you do know it. Because over the last couple of years, unfortunately, we have heard the word mandatory a lot. We've heard the word mandatory a lot. They've said to us loads that, stop saying it now, but it's mandatory that we wear a face mask. It's mandatory. That means we must wear a face mask, doesn't it? OK, so mandatory must mandatory work is mandatory. We wear a face mask. We must wear a face mask. Do you now know? Double tap the screen if you now know what mandatory means. Not anymore, but we've heard it. We've heard mandatory low, load and load and load. Yeah, Mariama, yeah. But the, in the theory test, they use the word mandatory. Which sign is a mandatory sign? Mandatory must do. They both begin with M, so that will help you. And also, the face mask thing will help you to remember because you have to do something without a choice. We, ma we must do it. Yeah, absolutely. Here's two examples of mandatory signs. Remember, Blue must do, this road is for you. Blue must do, or this road is for you. Blue circles are mandatory signs, okay? So what does sign A tell you? What does sign A mean? Charlie boy, there'll be a fair few signs. There'll be quite a lot of signs in the theory test, questions in the theory test all about road signs. Um, but how many you get is random. Yeah, blue must do, this road is for you, this road is for trams. Yeah, cool. Blue must do or this road is for you. What's this sign telling us? What's that sign telling us? Blue must do or this road is for you. What's that sign telling us? Left, yeah, turn in the direction of the arrow. Awesome. Now that's blue signs. You now know blue, blue circular signs, blue circular signs. Let's move on to red signs. Red signs are telling you what you must not do. Think of red for stop. Think of red for danger. Red, don't do it. Okay. Red signs are telling you what you must not do. So red circle signs are prohibitory signs. Prohibitory means don't do it. You are prohibited from going down here or from doing this thing. OK, you, you're not allowed to go down here or you're not allowed to do this thing. Here are two examples of prohibitory signs. Who must not go down this road? Red signs, don't do it, absolutely, absolutely. Who, look at sign A, who must not use this road? You're getting there. Yeah, there's, only a, there's a picture of one thing on that sign. Yeah, it's cars. 
it's no cars okay so let me just see if i can find the sign this one means no um all vehicles prohibited no vehicles it's got nothing inside you can't put a picture of everything in there so no vehicles okay that one means no vehicles this one up on sign a means no cars there's only a car inside there if it had a car and a motorbike inside, that would mean no motor vehicles. If it had a motor car and a motorbike, it would mean no motor vehicles. But it's just got a car inside, so no cars. What about sign B? I don't know, Lib, excess Lib. I think it's just to make it even more obvious, okay? Um, it shouldn't need the sign. It shouldn't need the slash, should it? Because it's a red circle. I, I know exactly what you mean, um, but I think it's just to make it even more obvious for safety. What do you think? Okay, so let's come back to the question. Remember, I cover signs in loads more detail in my course. I'll pin it there for you. Let's come back to this question. What does this sign mean? Think about what I've said about circle signs and about the colours. Does it mean cyclists are prohibited? Does it mean route for cyclists? Does it mean warning cycle route ahead? Does it mean parking place for pedal cycles? Is A, B, C or D broken so good luck for two o'clock today? There's some questions, answers coming in that are quite delayed, so uh, I, I've only just got them. So, yeah, absolutely right. Loads of people are getting this right. If you now understand about blue circle signs, remember this is a blue circle sign we're talking about, then if you understand that and you got that question right, double tap the screen, give me a load of like, and that'll be awesome to see. My name is Annie, I'm making theory easy. If you just joined me, stay with me. I've got some more, um, a few more road signs stuff to cover before I go off today. So I'm covering road signs right now. Yay, thanks for the likes, guys. Okay, so next um, next question. Next shape, I should say. What, um, we'll go on to triangle signs now. What does this sign mean? We know it's got a pedestrian in it, but what does it mean? Does it mean pedestrians in the road, zebra crossing, no pedestrians, pedestrians only? We know it's got to do with pedestrians, don't we? But what does it actually mean? What is it telling you? Pop your answers in. If you don't know, please put IDK. If everybody knows the answer, I will skip forward to another part of the lesson. So I need to know if you don't know as well as if you do know. Okay, so a few different answers coming in. Let me make it easy for you. When you look at this sign, Look at the shape of it. Look at the shape of it. When you, when you see triangular signs, notice the shape of it. All triangle shaped signs are warning signs. They are warning you about something. So you can easily remember that triangle shaped signs are warning signs. If you make a triangle shape with your hands, do this with me. Make a triangle shape with your hands, keep your thumbs together, Open your hands out and you've got the shape of a W for warning. Triangle signs are warning signs. So, so this sign here is a warning sign, okay? Triangle signs are warning signs. Do that and then put D for done in the comments when you've done that. Let me know when you've done the triangle and the W for warning. A good way to remember I know it's giving you a physical way to remember so you can hear me you can see me and you've got something to do as well all different ways of remembering stuff and another way is for you to say the words out loud say it out type the words in say it out loud it helps it to go into your mind forever Mariam getting there so here are three examples of warning signs. 
triangle signs are warning signs. What is sign A warning you of? Don't worry if you don't know, have a go at it. You can see three cars, one after the other. What is it warning you of? You're getting there, Goldie. You're getting there, yeah. Yeah, Daphne, well done. Yeah, just so traffic. It's warning you about traffic queues ahead. It's warning you that there may be traffic queues ahead, traffic queued up. So ease off because you don't want to crash into a queue of traffic, okay? So that is a warning sign. If you're getting emails, unsubscribe. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, I don't know your past, I'm sorry, but you can easily unsubscribe. Okay, what is sign B warning you of? Sign B, triangle signs are warning signs. What are you being warned of? Yeah, nice, fantastic. What about sign C? What are you being warned of? Yeah, horses running around, right? Exactly, wild horses. Yeah, absolutely horses. Fantastic, brilliant. Okay, so remember what I've just said. I've just said that triangle signs are warning signs. So let's come back to this question. What does this sign mean? Now, what we know is it doesn't mean no pedestrians and it doesn't mean pedestrians only it doesn't mean that if it was no pedestrians it would be in a red circle circle signs are orders red circles say don't do it this road is not for you so if it was a red circle that would be no pedestrians blue circles blue must do or this road is for you. If it was pedestrians only, then it would be in a blue circle, okay? So it's not those two, it's not C and it's not D. It's either A or B. It's either pedestrians in the road or zebra crossing. Which one do you think it is? Which Does that look like it's pedestrians in the road or does it, does it look like a zebra crossing? Which one of those does it look like, A or B? Read question, read them carefully. Pedestrians in road or zebra crossing? So answer me this question. Is how many people are in this sign? Is it a pedestrian or pedestrians? Answer me that question. How many people are in that sign? Is it pedestrians, more than one, or is it one person? It's one person. So, okay, so that's gonna help you. That's gonna give you a clue and help you to remember it's one person, says Emily. Yeah, okay. So does that sign, put the answer in again now. Do you think that sign means pedestrians in the road or do you think that sign means zebra crossing? So put everyone put your answers in. Yeah, I know, I know. It gets easy when somebody points things out to you. So do you think that is A, or B. It doesn't have zigzag. No, that doesn't. That's it, it, you, you walk. You walk across a crossing, don't you? You walk across a crossing. The zigzag bit is before the crossing. Yeah. Loads of great answers coming in now. I'm really excited because that's what excites me. That's what sets me up for the day when I know that I've helped people. You're absolutely right. That is warning you about a zebra crossing. Those dashed lines are supposed to be the crossing, okay? Um, pedestrians in the road is more than one person, isn't it? That's going to help you to answer theory test questions. I, I This is not, I, they just gave us the answer. What's the problem with that? That's not the problem. This is a lesson. And that's what teachers do. They give you the answer in a certain way. OK, so um, I'm helping you to remember forever. Cool. I hope I am anyway. That's what I'm aiming to do. Otherwise, I'm standing here wasting my time. OK, let's go through the next shape. 
What does this sign mean? Is it warning you of a T-junction ahead? Does it mean no through road? Does it mean do not enter this road? Or does it mean road for cars only? Thank you, Mariam. I'm trying to help you. So what does this sign mean? Is it A, B, C or D? Or I, D, K for I don't know. Thank you, Zara. Is that, that wasn't Zara, was it? Zara, eh, man. Yeah, I can see how you're getting mixed up. Okay, so let's go through it. Let's go through it with you. Rectangular shape size. You might want to take some notes. You might want to screenshot or just aim to remember this. I'll be delivering it again every week, though, this lesson. A couple of times a week, this lesson. So rectangular shape signs. Look at the shape and the colour. There are more different colours of rectangular shape signs. OK, so when you're looking at rectangular shape signs, you can remember that they are information signs. Rectangle signs are information signs. And you can easily remember that rectangle signs are information signs. If you put one finger, do this with me, put one finger up and then make that one finger into one side of a rectangle. So using that finger, draw a rectangle shape. Connection is bad. Oh no, is the connection bad for anybody else? Do I have to go if you can't see me and hear me? Let me know. Let me know, guys. Can you see and hear me or, or not? Does that mean no? It's good. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay, so use that one finger and make it into one side of our rectangle and then look at that. Thank you, guys. Then look at that finger and you can imagine it's the letter I for information. OK, so that's how you can easily remember that rectangle signs are information signs. Have you done that? Put D for done. It's fine for a lot of people now. Brilliant. But a D for done when you've done that, because what I've done is I've given you another way of remembering. You're joining in, Eddie. That's awesome. Hope you watch me on your own. <laughs> um, but hi to everybody if you're not. Okay, so different colours. Thank you, um, Piddy. I've got a hot read the first bit. Hi, Horse Mad, how are you? Okay, so the different colours, there's four different colours I'm going to explain to you now. First of all, blue. Blue is information or motorway signs. Blue rectangles are for information or for motorways. Put a yes if you understand that. Say it out loud. Blue is for information or for motorways. Say that out loud and then put D for done or yes, you understand that. Awesome, thank you. Green and white signs are for directions. You'll see that. I'll show you a sign, a picture in a minute. Green and white signs are for directions. Green for primary routes, that means main routes. White are for non-primary routes, that means non-main routes. And then you've got brown signs that are for tourist directions. So if you go for a day out, you're going to follow tourist, the brown tourist direction signs. If you're trying to find the beach, you'll see a picture of a sandcastle in a brown sign. If you're looking for a castle to go and visit, you see the picture of a castle in a brown sign. So Blue signs, rectangle signs, are for information, like this Contraflow bus lane sign, or blue signs are used on motorways, like in this end of motorway sign. Yeah, double tap the screen if that makes sense. The connection's bad for some people and not for others. I'm sorry about that. I can either go or just carry on anyway. It's hard to know. OK, you get that. Does that make sense? Double tap the screen if that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. OK, so green and white signs every day to you, every weekday. 
Green and white signs are for directions. So if you're following directions for a, a big a, um, a big place like London, you're going to follow green signs. And then when you want to go to the, a town, you follow the white signs. So if I was going towards my house, I might follow signs for Manchester and then follow signs for Nutsford. Green would be in Manchester and white signs would be for Nutsford. Does that make sense? And then, like I say, brown signs are for tourist directions. Come off, then come back in. Um, if you're struggling, um, someone's just said, because it's good for most people. Cool. So, blue signs are for information or motorways. Which of these signs is giving you, which of these is giving you information? Is warning T-junction ahead giving you information? Is no through road, you can't drive through on this road, is that giving you information? Is do not enter this road, is that giving you information? Or is road for cars only, is that giving you information? Which of those is giving you information? Yay, you got it right. I now know what other slides I can add to this to help it make even more sense. Awesome. So no through road is giving you information. If it was do not enter this road, what shape would it be? What shape and colour would it be? Eddie, can you answer this? What shape and colour would it be if it was do not enter this road? Ella, Lauren, awesome. It'd be a red circle. If it was road for cars only, what shape and colour would it be? If it was this road is for you, this must do, this road is for you. If it was road for cars only, what shape and colour would it be? If it was this road is for cars to use, must do, what shape and colour would it be? Sani Yamata, yes, it would be a blue circle. Blue must do, or this road is for you. If it was a warning you, of a T-junction, what shape would it be? If it was a warning, if it was warning you, what shape would it be? Yeah, Molly, yeah, but yeah, awesome. Yes, Luke Owen, brilliant. It's a bit of a, a delay. If it was warning you, it would be in a triangle and it's not, it's in a rectangle. So it's no through road. Does everybody know, Katie, thank you. Does everybody know I've been watching you, oh, it's gone. I've been watching you for two weeks and I passed last night at 8, 8 p.m. Olivia Jane, don't you feel great? Congratulations. Awesome. So does everybody know what a no through road is? Does anybody not know what no through road means? Let me know. Does anybody not know what no through road is. it doesn't mean no access actually it doesn't mean that it actually means dead end yeah what does no through road mean it actually means dead end it's not the road is closed <clears throat> let me show you look at this picture here at the beginning of this road there would be a no through road sign it just means it's a dead end at the end of the road. You can't keep on driving through. There's nowhere to drive through to. When you get to the end, you've got to drive back. So if you were, what reason would you go down this road? It wouldn't be to turn left or right to, at the end of the road. You'd only go down this road if you wanted to visit somebody who lived on this road. Okay, does that make sense? If you, if you live there, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, editing, cosplay. Yeah, absolutely, Amy. So, okay, brilliant. So there's some more shapes I want to cover with you. I want to make sure you do understand them properly. What must you do when you see this sign? What must you do when you see this sign? Yes, 
absolutely, you must stop and wait behind the line. Brilliant, stop and wait behind the line. What should you do when you see this sign? Should you stop at the end of the road? Or should you keep moving if possible? What should you do if you see this sign? So if you're saying stop and give way, they are two different things. Stopping is different to giving way. So if I was, if I was in town and I was walking and somebody was walking here, I might slow down, let them get past and then carry on walking. I would have given way. If I stop, I'd stop. Let them go past me, then I carry on. So stopping and giving way are two different things. So what should you do if you see this sign? Should you stop or should you keep moving if possible? A or B? Absolutely. The answer is B. Some people are saying stop. That sign means you should stop, you must stop. That sign means you must give way. It doesn't necessarily mean stop. What if there's nobody there? What if there's a massive gap before the cars coming from the right and um, from the right and the left? Why would you stop? You just give way to traffic on the main road. What I would do it was, is I would slow right down I'd get into first gear, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, stop if there's not a gap, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, and go if there is a big enough gap, okay? So you have to give way, so you keep moving if possible. Always keep moving if possible. There's no point stopping if you don't need to stop. Next, next shape, who follows diamond shape signs? Who follows diamond shaped signs? Do you know the answer to this? If you don't, don't worry about it. I'll teach you now on lots of people who might know the answer to this. Who follows diamond shape signs? You're absolutely right. Trams follow diamond shape signs. Brilliant. Lorry drivers are on the roads. So they'll just follow the same signs as we follow, wouldn't they? <laughs> so lorry drivers will follow the same track because they're on the road. Trams are on tracks, they're on rails. They have different shapes, they have diamond shaped signs. Next question, which sign means minimum speed? One of these means minimum speed. You must go at least 40 miles per hour. And one of them means maximum speed, you can't go any faster than 40 miles per hour. So have a, put the answers in, which one means minimum speed? So I'm gonna go back some shapes. So I'll go back to that one, I'll leave it on for five seconds. Okay, which one means minimum speed? And the answer is the blue one. Blue must do. You must do at least 40 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour is the minimum. Remember mini means small. Mini, mini egg is a small egg, yeah? So the minimum speed you must do is 40 miles per hour. The other one is a maximum speed limit sign. Maxi is big, the most speed you're allowed to do. Okay, so let's go on to these. Let's go on to these couple of questions. I like mini eggs. Yeah, I used to like mini eggs. What does a sign with a brown background show? Tourist directions, primary roads. Like mini roundabout, yeah, absolutely. Good one. Tourist directions, primary roads, motorway routes or minor roads. What do brown signs with a brown background show you? You know the answer, don't you? When you put the answer in, double tap the screen to tell me, yeah, I know this. I knew it. I knew it all along. This, I think it's an easy one, really, isn't it? 
Josh Heslop, that's awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you for popping in and telling me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, brown signs with brown backgrounds are tourist directions. What what about this question? What messages are given by circular traffic signs that have a blue background? They give temporary directions during a diversion. They give directions to car parks. They give motorway information. They give mandatory instructions. I'll pin my course there for anybody who wants to have a look at it. Gracie, this course will help you next time. So what's the answer to this question? Is it A, B, C or D? And once you've got it, please double tap the screen. I'm aiming to get more likes than I've ever had before on this live. Okay, absolutely awesome. So the answer is D, they give mandatory instructions. If you're not quite sure, blue circle signs, circle signs are orders, Blue circles are telling us what we must do. Blue must do or this road is for you. Must do means the same as mandatory. M for must, M for mandatory. Next question, what's the purpose of triangular shaped signs? Is it to give warnings? Is it to give information? Is it to give orders? Or is it to give directions? Um, Pin the link there from the person that's asking me. What's the purpose of triangular shaped signs? Yay! So many people getting this right. Don't worry if you're not. Don't worry if you don't get it right. Don't Barry, yeah, absolutely. The triangular shaped signs give warnings. They are warning you of a cycle route ahead. They are warning you of wild horses they are warning you of a junction or they are warning you of a of a hump bridge or they're warning you of um of two-way traffic ahead triangle shape signs are warning yes annie so make a triangle shape with your hands now open your hands out you've got the shape of a w for warning triangle signs are warning signs that's my signs made easy did you like my signs made easy did you learn anything from a signs made easy lesson let me know because i've included this lesson for a really good reason i'm way late today i've been on for almost three hours i'm going to give you a couple of opportunities to have a look at my course i'll tell you what my, what is in my course i'll answer some questions but i'm definitely going in six minutes i've got loads more to do today okay Real awesome. If you if I've taught you something, if you've learned something, even just one thing, then you know that my course will help you. Uh, because the pass rate is really low. The fail rate is really high. People are failing for all kinds of reasons. And I don't like it. I get messages every single day, every single day of the year, several of them. I'm really, really struggling. I'm how can you help me? Please help me. Um, and people say I fail so many times. It's, it's embarrassing. It's frustrating. It's wasting my time. I've wasted hundreds of pounds on failing. I don't know how to get through it. But what I want to do is teach you to pass. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm here now making theory easy for you. I've been live for three hours um, making theory easy for you. I will spend time putting this live onto my YouTube channel so you can see it later on if you want to. I want to teach you to pass using this course. If you want a step by step process and you know you will pass by the time you get to the end of it have a look at this course that i'm pinning for you i'm offering at a really really good price while i'm live and you will be 100 percent prepared to pass when you've gone all the way through it nobody has ever got in touch with me and said i've gone all the way through your course and i've failed my theory test it's never happened yet it is worth 69.95 while i'm live you pay 34.99 let me show you what's in it let me show you what's in the theory test course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100 test ready go to the introduction first so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the theory test and how to go through the course there are 14 different theory test topics let me show you what's in the accidents topic you can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. 
When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. If you suffer from, suffer from anxiety, I am an NLP master practitioner. I'm a master practitioner of hip, hypnosis. I'm a confidence coach. I did that training a couple of years ago so I could help people be more calm, more confident and get rid of their anxiety. Why are the question marks gone in there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, there's techniques in the course to help you with your hazard perception test. There's techniques to help you answer any multiple choice questions. The free bonuses I'm offering are a free hazard perception course, a free hypnosis course. The free eBooks I'm giving you are the top 10 reasons for failure and the top 20 hardest theory test questions. They are worth $34.95. If you sign up while I'm live, I'm live for another one or two minutes only that I've got to go. You only pay once. People are always asking me, how many times do I pay? Do I have to pay again? And how many, how long do I have it for? It's, it's for life. There is no, um, there's no limit. There's no time limit on it. Hello, lovely. My test is at 3 p.m. Your course is amazing. Scott Biddle, good luck for, for 3 p.m. Will it be on sale on Friday? Um, yeah, it'll be on Friday, yeah. Yeah, I'm almost sure it'll be exactly the same offer on Friday. Um, go through some hard questions, yeah, and anything you don't know, get in touch. You do, you know it. You will very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass. Here's some people that have passed. Let me just read a couple out to you. I passed my theory sixth time after going through your course um, on the 19th of September. Thank you so much. I passed my theory test yesterday after I failed 13 attempts and through your course I passed. If, you, if I have helped you today, if I've helped you to learn anything, then you know that this course will help you. Um, I'm loving the course. It's so helpful. Scott on here right now says your course is amazing. I think that's what he said. Um, I passed yesterday, used so many of your techniques. My theory today, I'm worried I won't pass. There's nothing you can do now, is that? It's today. Just focus on doing the very best you can. Uh, worrying won't help you. I know it's something you can't help doing, but take some deep, deep breaths. Um, Alfie Goodwin, the course is 100% amazing, guys. It helped me to pass. Thank you, Alfie, for popping on. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I saw another question. On. Can you please tell me how many questions in the test? 50 questions in, in the test, but they are random. They're random questions. There's a question bank of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions, and you'll get 50 of them. OK, uh, let's see. Ask any. There's no particular question. I've got to go. I'm very, very late today. There's no new questions in there. Um, am I back on live? Yeah, I'm back on at four o'clock. It's now 12 o'clock. So I've got to go and do some work. I've got to go and teach some driving lessons. I come back at four o'clock um, and then back on at half past six. Uh, your live is very interesting. What an amazing comment to finish on. Thank you so much. Um, so let me just pin... How much is it, please? It's $34.99, okay? So $34.99, the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. See what for. Let's see if I can get another few likes before I go. That would be absolutely fantastic to see. I'm aiming for the more likes than I've ever, ever had before. Um, don't forget to subscribe to me um, on YouTube. You can do that by clicking on this link as well. The link will take you to subscribe to me or to buy my course. Um, don't forget to follow me on um, you on TikTok, follow me on Instagram or wherever else, and I sh I'm going to help you. I'm going to make theory easy for you guys. Where am I up to? Next live lesson. Let's just go straight to my next live lessons. Um, next live, I'll be live at four o'clock. You'll see my you'll see my um, course questions you'll see questions in my course you won't see my face okay uh, so just questions and answers um in at four o'clock and at six o'clock at half past six i'll go through some questions and answers half past six tonight then my next live lesson is nine o'clock tomorrow morning so that's three lessons work on a book the course is there it's, i'll pin it there for you click on that link to, to buy the course click on that link to subscribe to my youtube channel keep forgetting that word subscribe 
takes me a second okay just signed up yay tick tick tock awesome uh let me just pin the link once more and then i've got to go to work i can't be late for my driving lesson i've got to change my top have a bit of breakfast and go and do a driving lesson now guys so i'll see you later thanks for joining me um it's been fantastic today thank you bye loads of likes please